Oh, shit. It is Friday, November 17th. What a day. What a day. God, thank you for these blessings for content creation. Because Michigan just fired Chris Partridge, who I think is one of the biggest douchebags in college football anyways. And we'll talk a lot about that. I've already gotten five texts from coaches that are like, thank God that douchebag got fired. Because everyone fucking hates his ass. But... I want to know where Scam Web is and Steve Deese's fat little fucking roly-poly looking ass. Where are you at, dog? Because you told us that this wasn't a big deal. You told us it wasn't illegal. There's a loophole. You told us no one would get in trouble. When Harbaugh got suspended, you told us that they were going to sue the Big Ten. You told us this was a rogue staffer. You told us Connor did it on his own. What you got to say now, bitch? <laughs> they fired a full-time coach. The coaches knew. We knew that. But the Michigan delusional-ass fans, the Michigan beat, everybody wear amazing blue, even if you accidentally put a blue shirt on, you got infected, and you believed that everything's going to be okay. I told you from day one this is a massively huge deal. I told you from day one this is not normal. This is not apples to apples. This is a big fucking deal, and that hammer's coming down. It's coming down. I'm talking mm-hmm. about the dude, you know, the dude that sits there on the bed, Chris, with his dick out. That type of hammer is coming down on Michigan. I know exactly what you're talking about. I was going to go the direction like Thor's hammer. You feel me? Thor's hammer. I just got, you know, it's, it's a Friday. I'm, I'm, I'm a little frisky. It's a freaky Friday here on Menace to Sports. For the new listeners, thanks for coming. We just keep it real. We tell you the truth. We don't deliver bullshit. And we also expose pedophiles. That's why you should watch this show over all the beat shows. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and subscribe while you're here. But we got a lot to talk about. I don't even we'll we'll get to the show notes. Okay, hold on, pause. Zach, right before we go live, Zach's like, I know you wrote a whole show, but shit changes. <laughs> shit. Hey, you you get a curveball, you can't swing at a fastball, dog. You gotta hit a curveball. This <laughs> is, is what it is. And we got a curveball today. I do have a, a fire ass coaches report. That's, yeah. uh, here's what I'm gonna talk about on the coaches report. I want to talk about Oregon State's likelihood to upset Washington because I think there's a great chance it happens. And I'm gonna tell you why. And then after finally getting the Ohio State, Michigan State film uh, room done, I, I'm going to give you my thoughts on where Ohio State is at right now and where are where are they in comparison to the team I think they need to be to beat Michigan. That's the whole conversation. Because fuck, fuck this Minnesota game. Nobody gives a shit. Minnesota's awful. They're like 198th at everything. It's an eight-day race to get good enough to beat Michigan without Jim Harbaugh, without Chris Partridge's bitch ass. That's what we're going to talk about in the coach report. Also got Mensa in studio today to deliver you some winners. Whew, sorry, Chris. I'm a little, I'm a little excited today. Facts. How's your week been, Chris? Bro, it, it literally, it just keeps getting funnier. Like this again, funniest scandal ever, bro. And I think it's because like, I'm so like into the Twitter world too. I've seen cope after cope after cope goalpost move. Like it's an Olympic sport. Like it's been amazing. I just get to sit back because my team's undefeated and not in controversy. You feel me? <laughs> I, and I my other you. team sucks, but they're also not in controversy. Shout right. out Georgia Tech, Yellow Jackets. Y'all got Georgia next week. Get ready. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> well, we we got a lot to talk about, man, yeah, and I'm do. really excited for this show. If you're here, like I said, like the video. Let's turn this bitch up on a Friday. It's a Super mm-hmm. Chat Friday. Anything you want to talk about, drop that Super Chat, and we'll get we'll get to you when we get to you. But enough about that, Chris. Lugie! Let them know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get to the show. Let's get to the show. I'm, I'm throwing the notes, right? Because we're just, are we going to talk about, are we talking about notes. now? Okay, cool. So look, bro. So yesterday, right? It was yesterday after we had heard for weeks and weeks and weeks about the Michigan war that was happening. The Michigan war, we, they were gearing up, right? Oh, yeah. Junction and junction. We're going to get bro, a, bro an extension, this, that, the third. You have the whole list in front of you. I don't have it anymore. Accepted the punishment out of nowhere when the hearing was scheduled today. And then Chris Partridge fired the day before game. Why would this happen? How does this happen? This, this, listen, I, and I did it on the coach report yes, yesterday. I thought with all the facts that we know, I thought Michigan had a good case because the Big Ten is they, – they're violating their own due process. Mm-hmm. And the only way they can violate that due process is if they have a ton of concrete evidence that the coaches knew, that Harbaugh sh- should have known. Should have known. And it – and obviously, with Chris Partridge getting fired, Jim Harbaugh just bowing down and kissing the ring of the Big Ten commissioner, Petiti. Yeah. He kissed the, big, the motherfucking ring, bro. Hey, he kissed the ring. He kissed the ring. And it's obvious what happened here, right? The Big Ten, before they went to court, spent all that money in legal fees, 
they shot him an email or maybe it was just a phone call and said, hey, listen, here's what we have. This, this, this. If you really want to fight this, you're going to lose. You're going to waste a lot of money. You're going to look really stupid. Mm -hmm. And they went to Jim Harbaugh and said, hey, dog, it's cooked. They got us. 4K, red-handed, hand in the cookie jar. What is it? What is it? Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. <laughs> we, ladies and gentlemen, we got them. And Michigan had to accept it. And that, and now it's a rat race. They're trying what they're trying to prevent right now. They're trying to make the moves they need to make to fire the coaches that they have concrete evidence against so that they can avoid some kind of harsh, massive punishment, right? harsh punishment. The good news is the big Ten's done investigating they're going to let the NCAA do that. We know that's going to take a long mm -hmm. time and they're going to get their wins vacated later. They're going to get show causes for assistant coaches later. That shit's going to come later. The good news is it's play ball. We still get to watch Ohio State, Michigan. We still get to see this whole thing play out. They can win what will be a vacated Big Ten championship, but it's going to be settled on the field. That's what I'm exci most excited about. For the stuff this season, do you think it's over or do you think it will continue? Because, like, Partridge the day before a game, that's like a, oh, shit. Like, well, that's a full-time head coach, dog. That really hadn't been implicated in anything up until this point. No. The only thing he's been implicated in was riding Jabril Pepper's dick to get a college job. That's yeah. all I've ever implicated him for and for being a massive, massive douchebag. Those are the two things that I think of when I think of Chris Partridge. I didn't think he was even involved in the cheating scandal. Mm -hmm. But, of course, you don't know, right? You don't know how Connor Stallions was operating with each staff. Like, the coordinator's pretty busy. Was he work going through an assistant coach to, to set it all up for the coordinator? Like, it. There's got to be a guy on offense, right? Whatever he was doing on defense, he was doing on offense. So who's the guy on offense? Is it Sharon Moore or is it God? I mean, I oh, hope. Mike. I hope it's not, not Mike Hart. Mike, not Mike. I hope it's not Mike Hart. Is Mike Hart the next to fall? Not Michael. I hate to see a black man fall during Black History Year, bro. I'm with you, but you, hey, you, you don't have a lot of options on yeah, offense. Say, the coordinator's black. I mean, it's like Clink is black. I don't know. Hire more white people. <laughs> you find a, you have a better chance to find. Whoa, 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 whoa. Better chance to find a fall guy. I'm whoa. just saying. Can't co-sign that one. That was crazy. I was like, don't want to see a black man fall. Hire more white men. <laughs> hey, hey, that was nuts. That was nuts. <laughs> shout, shout out, little bro, Michael. That was crazy. Um, all right. First, it was a witch hunt. Then it was no rules were broken. Then it was Connor acted alone. Then it was no punishment could take place this year. Then it was Jim extension. Then it was Ryan Day cheated. Then Ryan Day Rico. Then it's they're going to get a TRO if suspended. Then it's Michigan leaving the conference. Then it's war. And now it's Jim Harbaugh accepts punishment. Is this staff about to get blown into the galaxy, bro? I mean, I don't want to be over dramatic here. I do. I, I want to be over dramatic. And I knew you would be. All right. But I think there's going to be some definite firings. We've already seen one. There will be a, at least one more. I mean, we've seen we've actually seen four. One of them was trying for trying to fuck a 14 year old. So that one doesn't yeah, count. Mr. Yude himself. As we say, Soldier Boy told him, you Soldier Boy told him, you'd better go to the back of the Walmart. Hey, he, he, he better keep his ass in the house. That's where right. he better keep his ass. Um, I, I think you're going to have at least one more firing. And then, and then the NCAA will have to decide what retrospective punishment to impose, right? There's going to be something. And, and I think it's hilarious that all those things you mentioned, every time something came up, the Michigan faithful were like, I'm going to be insufferable when Jim Harbaugh signs the extension. It just proves that this is nothing. I'm going to be insufferable when wish Michigan sues the Big Ten and wins. I'm going to be – guess what, bitch? You're sufferable as a motherfucker. You ain't going to be insufferable because you're wrong. Mm -hmm. You've been wrong from the jump. I've said it from the beginning. Take your L on the chin and keep it moving. That's how you should act. Y'all cheated. I told you it was a big deal. Now motherfuckers are getting thrown on the street, losing their job. Just take your L and move on. Bro, separate kind of. Clink scale deactivated his Twitter, just deleted it off the face of the map. I'm not, look, I'm a, I'm a tin hat foil, but I was going to ask you. I mean, I can't imagine any reason in the world to de deactivate your Twitter other than... Not just deactivate, bro. Fully delete it. Yeah, I can't imagine one reason other than, I don't want anybody going through my Twitter. There's some shit on there. Like, what's the reason? Oh, you're going to get fired? Well, you, you still are going to try to get a job somewhere, and you need if you're going to be a college coach, you need social media right. for recruiting. Like, what is the what reason? And that's my question for the chat. Let's put a tinfoil hat on the other way. What reason would a full-time Power 5 Assistant football coach, 
delete their Twitter other than some scandalous shit? What's what's another reason? Can you find one? Bro, I unless it was just too toxic for bro, but but then you can't do your job. It's yeah. mandatory. You have to have Twitter. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like two toxic coaches that don't want to do yeah. Twitter have a Twitter and have an intern that runs their Twitter. Like yeah. it's not an option okay, to now, not have a Twitter. It's an option to not do Twitter. That's a good note. But somebody is doing Twitter for you. There's there's the rumor that bro snitched. And that's why he deleted his Twitter. He was like, because remember, they were talking about offering immunity is kind of what the NCAA came in and did. And I'm thinking, like, the only, like, players couldn't get offered immunity. They didn't do anything, right? That's what I said. Unless they were involved in the in the gambling side with Matt Weiss, what did a, what, what did a yeah. player do? So, but who could get immunity, Zach? Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm getting an update. Hey, we. I appreciate Here's, here's the next this. one. Oh, here's, uh, here's the next one. You ready? So, this is a rumor. But it's from a very, very, very good source. Oh, my God. The person that has was financing the whole thing and will not be coaching at least next week and will get fired was none other than Jay Harbaugh. No way, bro. Not been confirmed, but it's from a... I'm talking about one of those concrete sources who's been right about everything that they've told me. That Jay Harbaugh was the financier. Oh. That would make sense because Jay's probably got the money to pay off bros. And there time. was that one public Venmo. And, you know, they're probably like after that, like, hey, we need to be smarter about this. Or maybe, I don't know, Connor was buying a shit in his name. But the rumor is that Jay Harbaugh was the one that was financing it and making it all happen. Not Jay. JJ. Not Jay. JJ. Hey, the Harbaugh family really full of cheaters, bro. That's really Man, nuts. Thanksgiving's going to be a motherfucker a in the Harbaugh house. A motherfucker. <laughs> Bro, if that's the case, Harbaugh... Like, bitch, this is chicken. This is not turkey. Y'all cheated the, the turkey. You cheated the turkey, too? Bro, if that's the case, Jim can't keep his job. Right? I... I don't know. Bro, we got a hot... We got... Hey, like, if anybody knows a hibachi chef that wants to come in and, and pretend to flip meat behind us, pause. <laughs> Damn. <dude. laughs> no pause, just vibes. You know that. Yeah, you're right. We never pause. Not even today. That shit is crazy. I mean, that bro. means that Jim's son was the mm -hmm. one paying for it, if it's true. Learn from Grandpa Paul. J Grandpa Jack. Mr. Jack. Mr. Jack. I don't know what's next, bro. If that's the case, bro, this whole they're gonna get blasted into oblivion, bro. Yeah, this, this is gonna end just about as bad as as we thought it would. Yeah. I've I mean, I the only thing I'm surprised about is the timeline. Is, you, is the timeline. Yeah, I'm I'm I've, I've always said there's going to be vacated wins, all this shit. Whatever they do on the field now, doesn't matter. They're going to take it away, and we'll all remember that they won. But but <coughs> it's it was always going to end bad. This was always a big deal. Mm -hmm. I told you that from the minute it happened. I told everyone that. Like, I've been on the other side of it. I've never heard of anything like this. And as more details come out, guys get fired, you're like, damn, they really the, – why would they accelerate it this fast? Because it's that serious, right? Yeah, like, man. there's no other reason. Did uh. Did Chris get get a what due process? <laughs> no. right? Did he get due process, or does due process only work when the institute trying to come come after you? That's it, right? Something like that. I wanted to ask you about Harbaugh's impact on the sideline. Now mm -hmm. I, I know he's out for a little bit. I know I'm not following the notes at all. I'm so sorry. No, you're but, good. Uh, for Jim, at least, how big of a deal is it for him not to be on the sideline for the Ohio State game? On a scale like one to ten, ten, because I, I don't think it's really that much of a yeah, deal I've at said all. It, I've said it for a, over a week now. You want to really punish Michigan? And I said it yesterday on the coaches' report. Suspend the coordinators. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that were in charge of their side of the ball and were using this illegally obtained information. Those are the ones that should be sitting out these three games. Jim Harbaugh either knew or should have known. Yeah. And I get it. He's the CEO, so it looks better if you suspend him. But I don't think there's much of an impact here. Especially because he's like he's coaching during the week still. And yeah, that's he's coaching of, during that's the week, big. which is when the head coach is most valuable. Right. And then and, and he's Ur traveling with the team. Yeah. And, and and I know Urban did this little thing like here's all the things the head coach does. That was kind of ego driven because he was a head coach and never a coordinator. Mm. I mean, they, they they're obviously very important. They're the final say. They make the the clock management decisions, game game decisions, like fake punts, like all the big decisions, they make them. But when it comes to offense and defense operation, they might help a little bit, but they really, unless you're Ryan Day or Lincoln Riley, it's not that big an impact. I got a great question for you and for the chat. Mm -hmm. 
Who is more valuable on game days, Connor Stallion or Jim Harbaugh? Ooh, shit, Connor Stallion's not even close. Not even close? Not even close. Think about it. Jim Harbaugh sprinkles an opinion here and there. Connor Stallion was telling the coordinator what the other team was running every fucking play. I mean, it's like not even remotely close. Oh, hold up, bro. I got someone saying, check my phone, bro. They probably got some more shit. My goodness. Hey, it's a freaky Friday around around here. Yeah, okay. Breaking. Oh, this is from Ross. This is Yahoo. Uh, breaking. NCAA presented Michigan evidence that points to UM booster Uncle T as having partially funded this scouting scheme and assistant coach now fired Chris Partridge as attempts as attempting to destroy computer evidence. Oh shit. He was trying to <laughs> he was trying to cover his tracks. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> Hey, no way. Not Uncle T. Uncle T? Who the fuck is Uncle T? We need, we need to deep dive into who Uncle T. Hey, this shit is fucking crazy, bro. They really caught bro trying to break the computer. He probably headbutted the fucking computer the way he looks. Probably just trying to take a bite out of it. Fuck Chris Partridge. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Uncle Terry? Who the fuck is Uncle Terry? Not the, not the watch. <laughs> it's, is it still a witch hunt, bro? And whose computer did they try to break? Youds, Weeses? I don't know. This is wild shit. I honestly can't believe this is my life. I you, I can't, bro. I just can't know, believe this is my life. Bro. We had good plans for today. We had a nice yeah, show bro. planned. We, had, we were, we're still going to get to it. We're still get to yeah, everything. Like, I had a great show written, and I just, I just can't believe. And you know what? I, whoever, you know what? I hope that Clink's not going down for this. I hope that Clink did take the immunity because that's what it was, right? Like someone was getting immunity. It wasn't the players. Doesn't it make sense for Clink to, you know, for coaches to get the immunity from the NCAA? I mean, I got asked this from our OG generals. Like, they were like, would you, if Urban cheated and you knew about it at Florida, would you have come to Ohio State? And I was like, oh, fuck yeah. That Ohio State money was life altering Crazy. compared mm -hmm. to Temple. And they were like, well, if you were at Ohio State, would you have, would you have snitched or would you have left if you if Urban was doing that at Ohio State? And I'm like, no, I wouldn't have. I, I didn't go to Bama. And even if Urban was cheating, I wouldn't have went to Bama yeah. because I didn't go for other reasons, my kids. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I just would have stayed the fuck away from it. I'm like, hey, bro, I don't – like, if someone came to me with some signals, I'd be like, don't ever bring me signals again. Like, I don't, I don't want to know about what y'all are doing. Like, and if the NCAA asked me an investigation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them I don't like pizza. Like, yeah. I, I don't know shit. I wasn't involved. You can not, not track me for shit because there's no text. I didn't get one signal, nothing. Mm -hmm. Doesn't the gym still, like, probably doesn't know thing? Doesn't that go to bed if it is, like, all these boosters, including Jay? Oh, Jay's involved. Jim definitely knows. Okay. If not, like, that's the most, like, e E2 Brute moment mm -hmm. in college football history. Like, damn, my own son? If you're on Harbaugh's staff and the NCAA is investigating, they come to you and they say, look, we're getting – everyone in this bitch is getting the show cost. Yeah. Except for whoever snitch flips first, immunity. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm they they can't do that. I'll get a lawyer right now. Really? As long as I'm not involved, I didn't do anything. They have no evidence against me. I'll win that battle on a oh. show cause. Oh, absolutely. Now you're gonna have to lawyer up and pay money, but I'd fight that. I'm not snitching. Yeah, I'm not gonna hold you. I'm singing like a fucking bird. I'm not <laughs> bro. I'm not falling on a motherfucking thing for Jim Harbaugh. I'll be like <laughs> Here's where the body is. This is how you can find them. I got tools in the back. I'll go help you dig them up. Like, what? <laughs> what? I'm singing. I'm singing for a medium fry. Like, I'm talking like I'm talking like Whitney Houston. We are singing, singing, Zach. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fuck a lawyer. Come here. Bring your, bring your homies. We're making a career. I'm singing. I'm doing it a staff. You're doing a staff meeting, too, right yeah. in front of him. Right in front of him. Yeah. This motherfucker used to text that dude to get the signals. Jim knew about it. I was there one time. I mean, you're right in front of him. That's what I'm saying. That motherfucker right there was funding it. That motherfucker right there trying to get me involved. That motherfucker knew everything. That <laughs> motherfucker over there, he hosted meetings every Wednesday. Took my hobby little steal next week signals. Man, they I'm, was all doing it. Hey, I'm, I'm singing, bro. Man, you're for, you're, hey, you're, I'm for, singing, bro. you're forever to be known as Takashi Chris. I'm singing, bro. I don't give a <laughs> fuck, bro. Takashi Chris in this bitch. Snitches get statues. In fact, not even snitches, bro. A truth teller. That's what it is. For Jim Harbaugh? For, bro, Zach, bro, keep it. Bro, it's Jim right, Harbaugh. What, right, what about for Dan Lanning? Hell no. Nah. Nigga, I don't know nothing. You're going to have to kill me. You got to you gotta shoot me. I'm not doing a motherfucking thing. You can kidnap my mother. I'm still not telling you what, what we was doing. <laughs> not even fucking right, close. I, I had to ask that just so I know I'm good. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not even close. Now, Mensa's cool. in Mensa might be in trouble. <laughs> 
But I'm just saying, as long as you don't put hot dogs in your look, bro. As soon as you put hot dogs in your pocket, your the, the street laws don't apply to you, bro. Like, <laughs> that's a fact. That's what that's it is. A fact. That's what it is, Zach, bro. I didn't, I didn't get any super chats, bro. I'm over here laughing my ass off. But look, hey, uh, we're gonna get to the super chats. We are. They're we coming. are. We are. We're, hey, we're gonna, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to quick commercial break. We're gonna talk some football, get some prop bets, and then then we'll go forever after that mm -hmm. talking this shit. So Fact. stick around, like the video if you haven't yet. Comment down below. Do you think Jim Harbaugh will be the coach at Michigan in 2024? Yes or no? Why or end? Will he be the coach? We'll be right back after this. Ooh, I got one for you, Menace Army. You know I'm a big pouch guy, and I just found the best pouches I've ever experienced. It's Lucy, L-U-C-Y dot C-O forward slash Menace. Just get that out of the way right now. They make tobacco-free nicotine for people to focus better, think deeper, chill out smoother, and inspire creativity. Here's what I love about them. One, it's the best quality pouch I've ever used of all of them that I've tried. It is A+, plus, number one in the, in, the, in the world of the ones I've tried. And, and the flavors are better, and they have uh, five different strength levels from two milligrams of nicotine to 12 milligrams of nicotine. So depends on how much you want or how much you need. My favorite flavors are the cinnamon and mint. And then I, I use the espresso in the morning when I'm having my coffee. It is the best out there. Whether you use nicotine to focus better or get a boost of energy or just to chill and relax, Lucy is made for your nicotine routine. If you want their tobacco-free breakers, pouches, or gum, go to lucy.co forward slash menace and use our promo code menace to get 20% off your first order. And they always offer free shipping. So you're not paying for shipping. You get a 20% off with, with the promo code menace on your first order. It, it's simply, it's the best, it's the best I've had. So here comes the fine print though. Lucy products are only for adults of, of legal age and every order is age verified. And as a warning, you know, this, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical, but go to Lucy, L U C Y dot C O forward slash medicine, get 20% off right now and get the best pouches on the market. One day away, tomorrow's a college football Saturday. And then eight days away from the, the biggest game of the year, Ohio state, Michigan, the rivalry game, Got to talk a little bit about it, mainly because Minnesota's dog shit. And I don't want to bore you. Ohio State's going to beat Minnesota by a lot of points. There you go. There's my analysis. What the fuck else do you need to see? We're also going to see some young players play, which is awesome. It was really cool to watch some of the young kids get in in that Michigan State game. Broke it down on the coach's film room. If you haven't checked it out yet, money back guarantee, 20 bucks a month. I, it literally is the most underpriced service out there. Because I want to have massive amounts of people in there. I don't I don't want it to be, I don't want it to generate more revenue. I want it to have just a massive crowd. So go check it out if you haven't yet. It, the, the link's in the bio. I'm not going to bore you. But I'm going to give you my thoughts after watching the game on the offense, the defense, the development. Because you're there's, there's an eight-day stretch right now where Ohio State needs to continue to level up if they're going to beat Michigan. Right, Michigan's a really good football team. We watched, we broke down their Penn State game earlier in the week in the film room. And you can see. Ohio State is getting closer to it being an even matchup, in my opinion. If you if they'd have played week three, I think Michigan was a far better football team. But Ohio State's making improving at leaps and bounds. So we're going to talk about that at the end. I, the big conversation I want to talk about after we go through the slate this weekend is can DJ Uyunglele take down Washington? Can he end the dream of the Huskies? Because I think there's a good chance that Oregon State in Corvallis can pull this upset off. We're going to break it down and talk about why. But looking at this weekend, tonight we got, I guess you got, if you're bored, you don't have anything to do, you don't have a honey to snuggle up with, Colorado's playing Washington State at 1030. Prime's trying to get to six wins to become bowl eligible. That would be a massive win in year one. Everyone early on was overhyping the shit out of Colorado. Hopefully you listened to us and tempered your expectations because they fell back to reality. One and six after starting three and oh, I have four and oh, whatever it was. No, three and oh, I don't know, it might have been four and oh, because they're, they have five wins right now. Um, I believe anyways, no four and six anyways, <laughs> moving on Colorado fell from graces. They're one and six in their last seven games and they need to get another win or two to try to be bowl eligible. If you want to watch it, it's on at 10 30. Then Saturday, we well, got a, I mean, really some average ass games. I mean, Washington, Oregon state at seven o'clock is the premier matchup. It's two ranked teams. I think Oregon state does have a chance at home to beat Washington noon. You're, you're, you can watch Michigan, Maryland, Louisville, Miami. I think Miami upsets Louisville in that game. It's at, in Coral Gables. I think Louisville falls out of any playoff conversation that they weren't ever really in. But I have Miami winning that game. Uh, Rutgers at Penn State. If you're really fucking bored. <laughs> Utah, Arizona at 230. 
could be an interesting game, both ranked teams. Uh, Georgia-Tennessee at 3.30. I don't think Tennessee is going to provide a lot of problems for Georgia. It is in Tennessee. It is on the road. I mean, you might be able to learn something about Georgia, see see how real it is, but Georgia's stretch of teams they played the last two weeks w- would tell you that this shouldn't be a game. But we've seen games that shouldn't be games become games. And then, obviously, at 4 o'clock on Big Ten Network, Minnesota at Ohio State. We'll talk, Chris and I will talk about that. But let's talk about uh, DJU. What if I would have told you before the year that heading into the final two weeks of the 2023 college football season, one team, Caleb Williams and the the Heisman Trophy, reigning Heisman Trophy winner, Caleb Williams, would have USC unranked and out of any conversation for anything other than some shitty bowl game. And DJ Uyunglele would have Oregon State at number 11 in the country and a far better football team. What if I would have told you that? You probably would have called me crazy. Chris would have been on board because he's a big DJU fan. But on paper, this could be a game. I mean, you start when Oregon State's on offense because Washington's so awful on defense. Here's Oregon State's kind of rankings and, and what they do. They're the ninth best offense in the country. They average seven yards a play. Ninth best rushing offense. 16th best passing offense. I mean, they don't turn the ball over. Only eight turnovers on the year. They, they don't allow sacks. And the good thing is you look at Washington. I mean, Washington's defense, I keep saying it, they are dog shit. 73rd total defense, 85th rushing defense, 52nd pass efficiency defense, uh, 93rd at creating turnovers, 124 at sacking the quarterback. I mean, they are awful. 102nd third down, 115th red zone. Like everything that I believe that matters in offensive football or in, in, in offensive football, they are awful at stopping it. Stopping teams in the red zone, horrible. Stopping people on third down, horrible. Getting after the quarterback, horrible. Like stopping the run, horrible. And out of all those categories that I that I think are critical in, in offensive football, the highest they are is 85th in the country in a rush defense. Just really bad. And you look at look at what DJ Uyunglele did. I mean, his career, we know what happened with Dabo's cousins at Clemson. You look at Pro Football Focus's grades, which I'm not a huge fan of, but they do paint somewhat of a picture. Freshman year at Clemson had a 71% overall grade. Sophomore year at Clemson, 66% overall grade. Junior year at Clemson, 79% overall grade. Now at Oregon State for his fourth and final year, 90% grade overall. So clearly, Dabo, his cousins, and the Clemson offense (coughs) were the problem. I would say this after kind of evaluating DJ all morning, kind of watching some film, looking at analytics. I, I think I would say this is fair to say. He's having a really good year. Nothing nationally relevant in comparison like to like the top 10 quarterbacks in the country, but solid as hell. PFF's 90% overall grade as a quarterback is 12th in all of Power 5 football. He's He's been pressured 100 times. I mean, he does not have the guys up front to let him go be a top 10 quarterback in the country. Of the, of the top 15 quarterbacks in the country, only five have been pressured more than DJU's been pressured. He has a 69% adjusted completion percentage, which is very, very average, but 2,200 yards, that's top 25 in Power 5 football, 9.0 yards per attempt per attempt is solid production. It's tied with Quinn Ewers at 15th in Power 5. So I think they're having similar years, if we're being honest. Quinn Ewers and DJU are playing really well. Not elite, but really well. 20 touchdowns and four interceptions. There's only 16 quarterbacks in the United, in Power 5 football. With 20-plus touchdowns, only four quarterbacks have less interceptions than him. So his ratio is really good. His average average depth of target, which is my big stat that I'm into right now, like on average, how far is he throwing it down the field? 12.0 yards, which is the sixth highest in Power 5 football. He's making some downfield throws. He's making some big boy throws. And he's doing it pretty well. The the, the stat that I always bring up is big-time throw percentage, right? A big-time throw is qualified as a classified as a throw that's that they get it out on time and it's with pinpoint accuracy. That is a big time throw. If it's supposed to be a three-step drop and deliver, it's three deliver. He's not double clutching. Second in power five behind Jaden Daniels at the number of his throws that are big time throws. The kid's playing really well. He's completing over half of his deep balls, which that's rare air. I talk about it all the time. If you complete 50% 50% or more of your deep balls, you're in rare air as a quarterback. It's only 10 quarterbacks in the country that are. He's ahead of quarterbacks like Brady Cook, Caleb Williams, Dylan Gabriel, Michael Penix Jr., Kyle McCord. 38% of his deep balls are quote-unquote perfect big-time throws. 
38%. That's fourth in Power 5 football. The biggest issue that DJU has had is he's under pressure a lot, and he's not that great under pressure, which is surprising because he's a decent athlete. The good news for Oregon State in this matchup with the Huskies is Washington sucks at getting after the quarterback. Like, awful. They're dead last in the Pac-12 with only 13 sacks, 124th in the country, as I mentioned. They have one problem when it comes to getting after the quarterback, and that is preseason first-team All-American DN Braylon Rice. He was uh, third-team All-American last year, first-team All-Pac-12. He's a stud. He's their one guy. If they can find a way to provide help when he's wherever he is, chipping him with a running back, helping with a tight end, sliding to him, all the things an offense can do, they'll, DJ, you will be fine. He won't be under pressure at all. They got to deal with one Defensive end. He leads the whole defense with 58, four, 54 quarterback pressures. That's second in the country of defensive ends. Only four, four sacks on the year to show for it, which isn't that isn't high at all, obviously. But he has triple the quarterback pressures of anyone else on defense. Triple. It's a one-man show for Washington. Washington's defense is ass. Skid marks and triple XL whitey tighties. Ass. And Oregon State can run the shit out of the ball. They're ninth in the country in, in rushing offense. Their, their running back, Damian Martinez, is already over 1,000 yards this year. He's eighth in Power 5 football. I think Oregon State has a chance to really expose Washington's defense. The only question is going to be, can they slow down Michael Penix Jr.? I mean, you look at Oregon State's defense. They've been, let's say, decent, right? 35th total defense, 21st rushing defense, which Washington's not a great rushing offense anyways. But 56th pass efficiency, 39th pass production, I mean, you look at third down, 43rd, third down, 99th in the red zone. So it's it's just an average defense against one of the top three offenses in college football, if not the best offense in college football. Can anyone contain Michael Penix Jr.? Can it be done? That's the question. I think Oregon State, they, they certainly are not going to stop Michael Penix Jr., Roma Dunsay. Like, that's not going to happen. But can they slow him down a little bit? Because he had over 300 yards and four touchdowns against Oregon, who has a really good defense. I don't think it's realistic. I think this is going to be a shootout. I think there's going to be a lot of points, and we'll find out if those if those analytics and rankings for DJU and his his offensive firepower are just a little overrated. I will tell you this: Oregon State contained Shadour Sanders. I know it's 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 apples and oranges. You're not comparing the same thing here, but he was 24 of 39 for 245 yards and two touchdowns. His third least productive game of the year, and his 62 percent completion percentage was was his lowest of the season this thus far. I think Oregon State can do enough to make it a game. As long as their offense is not fraudulent and Washington is as bad as I believe they are on defense, I think this is going to be a game. You throw in some home field advantage, I'm calling the upset. The Pac-12 every year fucks around and finds out. Washington is fucking around right now, and I think they're going to find out. And then the question is, if they lose this game and Oregon beats them, could Oregon still go? And if they lose this game and beat Oregon a second time, you're going to have a Pac-12-less college football playoff like every year, I guess. <laughs> So that's my thoughts on that game. I want to talk about talk a little Ohio State. After film review, the final stretch, eight days away from a one-game season. I mean, it's kind of always been a one-game season. You couldn't fuck up against Notre Dame, couldn't fuck up against Penn State, but shouldn't. This colossal matchup coming in eight days is for all the marbles. I think the loser's out of the playoff race, and the winner obviously is in, assuming they don't lose to Iowa. What does Ohio State need to do to put the finishing touches on offense and defense to be at full strength to beat Michigan? Number one, it starts with Honda McCord. They need to put that mid-sized sedan in full-on sport mode, the level up. What does Kyle McCord need to continue to get better at? He's got, what, one more game and then six days to, to level up enough to beat Michigan. Here's the three things he has to do. First, he has to be better under pressure. Has to be. He's 63rd in the country with a 39% completion percentage. It needs to be better. He, he is one-third as likely to deliver an accurate ball on time versus blitz than base defense. If a team blitzes him, the likelihood drops to, to one-third as likely if a team blitzes. Even if you pick it up, that, that can't happen. Why? He panics a bit. He still doesn't have confident pocket presence. His pocket awareness needs to improve. He needs to get better at a scramble drill. I know he's not a great athlete. There's a lot of bad athletes that have been good at, at scramble drill. And no more intentional groundings. That's all about toughness. In the film room, I was just flabbergasted at the one where he threw it at the feet of the offensive lineman. Like, you know that's going to result in a loss of down, same as a sack. Why not just dive forward and get a yard? It's because he doesn't want to get hit. 
His toughness is a major question mark for me. I think he's grown. I think he's tougher than he was week one, but it has to get better. When he's kept clean, 10.7 yards per attempt. 10.7, almost 11 yards every time he throws the ball when he's kept clean. When he's under pressure, four. 11 to four, that's the drop off. 93% passing grade when he's, when he's kept clean, 28% passing grade under pressure. It's the biggest chink in his armor, the biggest issue he has. There's a 30% drop off in completion percentage. His likelihood to turn the ball over is also 400% higher when he's under pressure. So that's the first thing. The second thing, which you can't find an analytic for, you have to be a part of the film room to see, is he's misreading concepts. He does what I call skip reading. Skip reading is where you drop back. You're a little nervous because you're in a pocket in big time college football. You might get hit and he bounces through his reads too fast. And he, he doesn't let plays develop and doesn't hit his second read and gets to his third read too fast. A lot of people call him check down Kyle. There's times where he checks it down and it's absolutely appropriate. There's times where he skips through his reads too fast on three level passes. For instance, three level passes are this. You send a guy deep, you send a guy intermediate and you send a guy short one, two, three, three levels. Twice on film in the Michigan State game, he didn't take the shot down the field when he should have. Marv should have had another touchdown in that game. Uh, twice on film, he he not only skipped, the first one got taken away, they doubled Marv or whoever it was. He skipped the second read to check it down. He's skipping through these things. And it happens on horizontal reads too, where you go right to left, one, two, three. There's times where Cade Stover had one, he would have had a touchdown down the middle of the field. Kyle skipped right over him and checked it down to the third read. That has to change. You have to hit those shots when the defense gives them to you. Have to. The third thing is turnover-worthy plays. He had his first game without a single turnover-worthy play in the throw game against Michigan State. First one all year. Massive growth. That has to happen on November 25th. He cannot have turnover-worthy plays. He can't throw interceptable passes. It just can't happen. Those are the three things that has to happen. The improvement is there. That the, And people try to say I'm negative about Kyle McCord. No, no, no. I'm just talking about what he can improve to become a great quarterback. Sorry if that hurts your feelings, Buckeye fans. Those are the three things he can improve. And if he improves all those three things and turns them into strengths, you're going to have a badass quarterback on your hands because the improvement's there. He's second in the Big Ten in adjusted completion percentage. He's playing really well now. I mean, he'll, he's playing well. Let's put it that way. He's playing well. He played below average early in the year. He's graduated to do good. Now, can he be great? Maybe. Can he reach elite? Not this year. It's just a reality. Overall in offense, quite the level up. The quiet level up, really. I mean, 14th passing production, 19th total. You got a top 25 offense now. You didn't. We didn't have that at Ohio State three weeks ago. I mean, I'm not going to go through all the analytics, but it is what it is. The run game, couldn't, the, the run game's ranked 78th in the country, right? And if you just look at stats, you're like, damn, they can't run the ball. Here, here's the problem. Couldn't run the ball against Penn State and Maryland. 1.9 yards per carry in both games. One issue. Travion Henderson didn't play in that game. This run game at full capacity with a healthy Travion Henderson, Henderson was on full display against a good rushing defense in Notre Dame. I mean, Notre Dame's a top 30 rush defense in the country, and Trey averaged 7.4 yards per carry, went over 100 yards and a touchdown. We've seen the growth. We've seen the run game look far better with Trey. And you look at Michigan's defense the last two games, Purdue and Penn State, they, they allowed over four yards per carry in both games. And Ohio State's run game is superior to both of them. You could call the, pet, the Purdue game because, oh, well, the, the backups went in. I know all the excuses. That Penn State game was telling. You go watch the coach's film room breakdown. Michigan's a really good rush defense, but I'm not going to say they're better than Notre Dame. Maybe slightly. The run game is different with a healthy Trey, period. The run game is really, really good. On the other side of the ball, silver bullets, lock and load. You lose a couple bullets, put another couple in the chamber. I do have concerns. You're talking about three absolute studs on defense that are questionable for the game. Lathan Ransom, we know, is out. He's one of the top, definitely top four players on defense. Michael Hall Jr. might be out. We don't know the, the details of his injury, but he played like a series or two against Michigan State and, and then didn't play again. So he's he's a very disruptive force inside. I don't think it's a massive loss, but I do think he's one of the top six players on defense for sure. And Tommy Eichenberg, all I'm going to tell you is this. That fucker's absolutely playing against Michigan. <laughs> Even if he ha has to cut his arm off, he's playing in that game. But you really would like him to be at full strength. On defense, it's really been the same story all year. Not a lot of growth or development. Number one pass defense in the country. The secondary is ridiculous. They're, they're, they're unbelievable. Top 25 rush defense. The one thing they don't do is they don't have pressures, sacks, or disruption. They're solid against the run. 
suffocating against the pass, stout, aggressive, a tough defense. They will choke your offense out. But they don't create negative yardage plays to get teams behind the chains, and they don't get the fucking football. They don't, they don't generate turnovers. Here and there, every now and then, flash in the pan, consistently they don't disrupt the football. Those are the only two weaknesses I see on defense. The secondary, been the, the greatest fucking gift that ever happened. After watching last year's secondary compared to this year, oh my God. I mean, we have Ohio State has four corners that can really play. I mean, Jermaine Matthews Jr. is a future superstar. He has the highest graded, he's the highest graded player in coverage on the team, lowest completion percentage against on the team, 29% completion percentage. He's worked his way into a rotation. I mean, he played 47 snaps against Penn State, 69 against Rutgers when Denzel Burke was out. Denzel Burke comes back and he's getting some play, he's getting some playing time still. He's earned the right. Denzel. Burke, Davison Igbenosin, Jordan Hancock, Jermaine Matthews. Those four corners, I'd put them up against almost any four corners in the country. Proctor and Son Josh Proctor and Sonny Styles deep, combined with those corners, that's an elite secondary. Arguably the best, if one of the best, if not the best in the country. I my only concern is a ding at safety, and you have to trot Malik Harford out there because he's he's played well, but nothing outlandish, nothing outstanding he's not like Jermaine Matthews I'm really excited about his future I think he's gonna be a great player I worry about him in the game with everything they have to ask their safeties to do against Michigan that would concern me that's my thoughts uh went a little gonna go a little long today because we got to get Mensa in here I'm gonna let Chris Mensa's in studio today so I'm gonna switch the view and give you Mensa to deliver you some winners tonight hopefully over the weekend and we can build our bankroll up menace to picks killing it the prop the prop model second tonight so we'll bring Mensa in let Chris Find out what winners we're going with. Get then we'll get to a commercial break, and then we'll get back to the regular show. I appreciate you. Let's bring Mensa in. Mensa, what's up? How we doing? Good, man. Whenever you come in, it's like always a surprise to me. It's like, oh shit, like oh, what are we doing? I do want to ask you, bro, before we get to your winners for today, your picks for today. Absolutely. I don't know if you saw last night. I'm sure you saw the Bengals game. Obviously, Joe Burrow left the game with the wrist injury, uh -huh. and now since it wasn't reported in the what the injury report the. The NFL is investigating Joe Burrow and the Bengals for why it wasn't reported. You as the gambling guy, what are your thoughts on reporting injuries? I mean, I think it's huge. I mean, uh, I'll say last year, especially in college football, college football is even worse than the NFL mm -hmm. in terms of reporting injuries. College football, everyone just lies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're so vague with their statements that they put out, and they don't release injury reports until 90 minutes before kickoff sometimes mm -hmm. um and I, i'll tell you what it's it's tough to navigate as a as a you know as a gambler you have to figure out you know which you know which lines you're going to stay away from and, yeah. and and how the game script totally changes when a, one player is ruled out you know yeah when jake browning comes in the game yeah well like last night we got screwed with tyler boyd over four and a half receptions he has three catches with joe burrow in the mm -hmm. game jake browning comes in screwed nothing we also got screwed with Mark Andrews getting hurt in the first drive. Yeah, the injuries you know, are tough. Two catches in. I'm like, oh, this is going to be an easy catch. We had him over four and a half receptions. Yeah. A couple of bad beats yesterday, but uh, you know what? It happens. It's the uh, it's the NFL for you. Yep, but. it is. It is, it is the roller coaster. I was curious your thoughts on that, just because like I know that there was all that the, the, the hoopla on the internet yesterday was, oh, Joe Burrow's got something in his hand. If you zoom in on this video, yeah. maybe we can see it. It's weird. It's like. You know, they're, they're, all the talk was pregame. Someone's like, oh, he came off, you know, with with a, with a brace on or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and it's tough because, you know, sometimes it's you like, do, do you look into that or do you not? It's it, it's it, you definitely go back and forth with that. Um, I'll tell you what, one of the things like that was interesting, too, is yesterday in the BC um, pick game, I was looking at props for that. And they were talking like one of the, the quarterback for Pitt, his prop lines were up and then he ended up getting um bench like 20 minutes for kickoff and it's like it's weird how you know teams can be so vague with that and it really screws over uh betting lines from that perspective yeah. because i perhaps would have taken the backup pick quarterbacks mm -hmm. uh passing yardage total but it wasn't available because you know he was benched yeah they're, hard, they're hardly ever available i remember one time i was looking for like a, a devin brown rushing prop couldn't <laughs> yeah. find it dude Could i not know find it Oh, it's brutal. So, what a Vegas time. Vegas always knows. <laughs> they always know. All right. Want to talk about today's winners, Mensa. Yeah, Who absolutely. do you got for us today? What do you like and how? So we got uh, two games tonight. Uh, both going to be electric matchups, actually. Uh, both games uh, have high-powered offenses with kind of, you know, no defense to back mm -hmm. it up. Um, we'll start in the uh, American Athletic Conference. Uh, we got UTSA versus USF. And I like the wide receiver for UTSA, Joshua Cephas. 
uh, over 75 and a half receiving yards. Uh, Cephas is top 25 in all of Division One in, in PFF receiving grade. Boom. He's 10th in the nation. He's 21st in targets, 16th in receptions. I think he could have a monster game tonight, especially considering USF is one of the worst uh, pass defenses in all of Division One. They're 124th in coverage grade, and they're 120th in success rate versus the pass. So, I yeah, play. Cephas, so play that. <laughs> yeah, I see Cephas having a massive day. He's their slot guy for UTSA. Um, and kind of, you know, another thing that I look for in these types of games is both teams play with fast pace. Mm -hmm. Uh, both are top 25 in pace of play. They love to throw the ball. And I think that, that means Steve is going to have ample opportunity to cash. Um, also another thing to look out for is USF is 133rd in the nation in explosiveness versus the pass. They give up big plays all the time. Cephas could catch, he could cash this on two catches in the first half and then boom. Or cash. It's it's that simple. So um, so confidence in that one. That's, oh, that, love that, that one. That's a locky lock. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then second, I got two props in the late game. The Pac-12, Colorado, Washington State tonight. Pac-12 after dark. Fun, fun matchup. Uh, and I love both quarterbacks tonight to absolutely pad the stat sheet. I mean, they both teams kind of mirror are mirror images of one another. Great passing offenses. Colorado is sixth in the nation. Washington State is 29th. Both have some of the worst pass defenses in the nation. Uh, Colorado is 110th in coverage grade and 112th in success rate versus the pass. Whereas Washington state a little better, but not by much 81st in coverage grade 71st in success rate versus the pass. Um, and both these quarterbacks, man, I mean, they're both top 10 in adjusted completion percentage in division. I three. love Cam Ward. I think he's the most oh, underrated quarterback in the entire country. Absolutely. I love Cam I've, Ward. I've loved playing his props over the last two seasons. We cashed out, I believe it was last week. Uh, we put out a Cam Ward prop and I had a bunch of his last year and he's just like an, a dynamic quarterback. It'll be interesting to see where he goes in, uh, in the draft this upcoming year. I can see him almost falling like a Dorian Thompson Robinson. Yeah. He's got that DTR know. kind of build too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, and similar to the UTSA game, both teams love to play fast. Colorado's 13th in the nation in pace. Mm -hmm. Washington state is 26th. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take both quarterbacks over yardages tonight. Shadur Sanders is 305 and a half and Cameron Ward is 323 and a half. I like them both to go over. I mean, this is going to be a shootout that uh, over under, I believe is uh, approaching 70 in this game. So expect a lot of points, expect a lot of passing yards in this game. Both teams uh, only rush the ball. I think, uh, I think, Colorado's 133rd and Washington State is 132nd in rush rate. So they're both going to be throwing the ball all night. Take both quarterbacks to go over. And I know, hey, I know at Menace Army here, we like a little parlay action. I know Zach loves roll that. Roll it up. So Zach's going to roll that parlay. bitch up. Zach over there rolling it up right yeah, now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's already on. He's, he's logging into draft right Life now. Life's too short. Play the over, right? Is that all oh. you got? You got – that's that's it for those tonight. Three. Those three Oof. props: Cephas over seventy-five and a half receiving yards, Shador Sanders over three hundred five and a half passing, and Cam Ward over three twenty-three and a half passing. And when those win, sign up for Menace to Picks or Menace to Sports Patreon gambling tier. Absolutely, get you uh, get you squared away. One of the only what subscriptions that pays for itself. Absolutely. If you're a one dollar per unit better in the last week, we've made almost a hundred bucks. Last night mm. was the first losing day we've had in a while in, in the last week. We're up over a hundred bucks on the week for a one dollar unit better. We got guys in our warm room, the elite gamblers tier that we have, we got guys throwing together, you know, a thousand dollar paydays each day in and day out. And it's just if you're into gambling and you want or you want to get in and you want to learn how to do it from an analytical standpoint, there's no better way. Mensa is the very best. Mensa, I appreciate you. Do want to get a quick word from our partner and then get our guy Zach back in here to finish out the show. Absolutely. Hi, Menace Army. If you need the perfect, the best bed sheets that I've ever used, at least, you got to go to trymiracle.com forward slash menace. Miracle made sheets are incredible. They, they were inspired by NASA. They have this, this fabric that is infused with silver to keep you cool at night to give you a great sleep. And it also self-cleaning. It eliminates up to 99.7% of bacteria growth. I don't know what you do in the bed. Sometimes there's some, some, you know, some fluids, some stuff going on, and you don't want to eat bacteria growing to give you acne, make you smell bad, and all that other stuff. These are the most luxurious and comfort and quality sheets I've ever owned. Justine and I use them every night. We had just ordered a second set so we can rotate them out. They're the best sheets I've ever owned. They're designed for your skin. Stop sleeping on bacteria, man. It is gross. So all you got to do is go to trymiracle.com slash menace. And not, they already have prices slash 40%. You'll get an additional 20% off with three free luxurious bath towels. 
They're really nice bath towels too. So all I need you to do, go to go to trymiracle.com slash menace. Get that already slashed 40% off pricing right now. Get an additional 20% off plus three free bath towels. Incredibly affordable, cheap, and they're the nicest sheets I've ever owned. Go check them out. I'm back. We back. We got super chats, bro. Chat was popping off crazy. I'm ready to get back into the uh <laughs> into the bullshit, right? Before we get anywhere, two things. One, oh, I need you to like this video. Like this video and comment if you think Jim Harbaugh is going to be the coach of 2024. Is he going to get fired this offseason? We know he's going to coach this year, coming back in for the Big Ten postseason, let's just call it. But I also want to mention, if you, ha- if you haven't heard about it, we got a big fundraiser going on for the Michigan game. The big board is back. We do them every year for big games. It's a chance for you to win up to, really, I guess you could win $5,000. $5,000 in prizes. The grand prize, it, it, what you do is you buy a square. They're $100 a square. It gives you the fi- final digit on the winner and loser. If you match with the final score, you win $3,000 for your $100 uh, investment. It's gambling. So one in 25 chance of winning. $500 first quarter. $500 third quarter. $1,000 at halftime. Total of $5,000 prizes. One in 25 chance to win. Four chances to win. Last We did it for the Penn State game, and one guy won the uh, halftime third, I think halftime third quarter final score, mm-hmm. but um, got, got a big-ass Venmo. So the Venmo's below me, Cameron Media. No LLC, no underscore. Make sure you check friends and family so we don't have to pay the fee. And um, yeah, well, I don't know the phone number. Just pay without confirming it because that's our Venmo. Yeah. Go lock in your square. The link's down in the bio. Come, come buy some big boards. We sold 25 yesterday. So this bitch is going to sell out fast. I, I give it through the weekend. So do not wait. Do not wait if you want to play. $100 a square. Lock it in. My guy, my guy. Chat been going crazy as well. Gorgie, thanks for the two. Fuck Twitter is a sick place. Salute to you two gents. It is a sick place. Gorgie's yeah. over there defending me to all these people talking about my kids. It just It's wild place. Twitter's a wild place. Yeah, fuck. Speaking of, we're live on Twitter right now and live on Facebook. We Go is, follow us. Menace to sports on both. We is live over there. Dylan, thanks for the two. What happened to due process for Chris Partridge? Man, they they, they say due process is for potential victims. Y'all motherfuckers, guilty as hell. <laughs> bro, it, it, bro, it might be fucked up, bro. But when, when I saw the thing about him destroying evidence, to me, when I look at him, he looks like someone who destroys evidence just by throwing it in some water or some shit, or just throwing it on a computer on the ground. Right. Instead just, of like knowing what he's doing. Like they walked in and said, Hey, we're going to need your computer. He grabbed that bitch and threw it threw out the it. window. <laughs> Took the power cord away. No doubt. Said, and, Good and, luck. Listen, it's not, this is not that surprising. And, and if Jay Harbaugh is actually involved, they're the two most likely candidates because they, t- they both have cringe energy. Like I remember Tony Alford and Chris Partridge got into like a Twitter beef mm-hmm. years back over Kareem Walker. And Chris Partridge was the one starting it. And it's like, what are you doing? But it's a it's the Michigan way. It's the same thing Jed Fish did with me on Twitter. It's like y- y'all are some y'all are some clowns. It's a Michigan man. Michigan man. Goodness gracious. CJ, thanks for the two. Ann Arbor is burning. Bur- I mean, that bitch is in fuego. <laughs> the thing is, bro, we kept seeing the glow from the fire, and Michigan fans kept saying, no, this is. This isn't smoke. It's just rumors. I mean, Ryan Day started it. You're overreacting. This is going to be nothing. You're just scared to play us. But they might be. But it has nothing to do with the fact y'all some cheaters. <laughs> oh, bro. So uh, so your guy, Scam Webb, today said that Chris Parcher's being fired has nothing to do with whatever Connor was doing. It's because of how he was advising other people with the NCAA investigation. Yeah, okay. Okay. Just has Sam Webb been right about one thing yet? Has he? Bro, it's approaching mental illness. Not only has Sam Webb been wrong at every stop of this scandal, he also was the lead guy who had all the info on the pedophile and didn't break the story. Mm -hmm. Like, he is the most distrustworthy person on the beat. Like, Steve Deese, I don't think is distrustworthy. I think he just cares a lot and is misguided. Scam Webb is a mouthpiece for Michigan and is pumping misinformation. He is the Austin Ward of Michigan. Isaiah Hole, another Michigan insider, is talking about Ohio State is behind all of this. This is it's just fucking hilarious. It's like, we got to get it. It's funny because it Ohio State's texting, texting me asking what's going on. Yeah, Ohio State's behind all of this. Yes, they forced Chris Partridge to throw his computer down a flight of steps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Jordan, my guy, Michigan fan Jordan, thanks for the five. They say God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. <laughs> I am not one of them. Please make it stop. <laughs> we still beat the Buckeyes, though. See, that is the Michigan fan. People like Jordan that I respect, and I'm glad they watch the show. Yeah. Because 
when we're talking about Michigan and the fans, we are not talking about people like Jordan. Not, and Jordan's a real one, bro. Or, or you know, the, our, mm-hmm. we have a bunch of Michigan fans. Yeah, no, Jordan's a fucking real one. Me and him go back and forth on, on the show, but fucking real as shit. He was the one that I think he put the uh, under, under your Carrie whatever, your Carrie, what's her last name? Carrie Croft? Yeah, your Carrie Croft interview, he put Chris gets no buckets. I, mean, yeah. I, was, nowhere, <laughs> I was nowhere to be seen in the interview. Like, I did an interview. Chris had nothing to do with it. It wasn't even about sports. Yeah. And he had to take a shot at Chris. I love it. Uh, I don't, but I'm here I for it. Do. It's, I, funny. it's funny. No, it shit makes me fucking laugh. Uh, Keel, thanks for the two. Ha, 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 ha. Fuck Michigan. <laughs> That's the best $2 super chat we've ever gotten. Devin, thanks for the five. Beers are on me when we beat the cheaters up north. Go Bucks. Hey, for everybody in the chat, or just Chris and I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hold you, bro. I, I think we're going to blow them out. Chris, Christian Morma, thank you for the five. What's up with JB thinking it's a witch hunt for Harbaugh and how he thinks that the Big Ten is the one that started the investigation? Because I like JB, but it's not a witch hunt, big dog. JB always wants to do that. Here you go. Here's the next one. Sports Illustrated reports the Big Ten was prepared to reduce Jim Harbaugh's suspension to two games and allow him to coach in the game until the NCAA presented new information, which did not directly implicate Harbaugh, but showed, but which the Big Ten showed to Michigan. Suddenly, the three games is just fine. Whoa. Ohio State was pushing the Big Ten to get Harbaugh back on the sideline for the game. And the NCAA came down and said, nah, here's some more information. And the, everybody was like, okay, okay, three games is fine. But I thought Ohio State did this. No, Ohio State. Exactly. Ohio State tried to get him back for the game. Reduce yeah. punishment. Ohio, oh, the Gene Smith mm-hmm. was in con- conversation with the Big Ten trying to, I guess, help Jim Harbaugh get back on the field. They didn't want to play Michigan without Jim Harbaugh. Bet. Bet. That shit's fucking hell, bro. Crazy. That shit's hell, bro. NCAA is really Lee Corso. Not so fast, my friend. <laughs> Not so fucking fast. <laughs> Joe Dinosaur, thank you for the two. Partridge's owed due process, probably Desmond Howard. Yeah, and so is Alex Yud, yeah. right? That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> Shit is crazy. Joe, thanks for the five. Anyone else having fun? I sure am. I'm having a blast. I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Bro, it's just a bunch of comedy. Oh, this is an interesting one. Brandon, thanks for the five. If Urban went to AM, how fast would he shut down that yell ladder nonsense? Oh, man, real fast. So I, I guess I'll use this to hit another topic. They said that uh, Trace Armstrong has been in uh, College Station the last couple days. Well, it's, it's not because of Urban. They said, it, well, the, the boards are saying Ryan Day. Oh, could I don't know. Maybe. I don't I don't think I mean Ryan's Ryan. not going to Texas AM, but Mm-mm. Trace represents like a hundred coaches. That's like, what it I'm could saying. be anybody. That's what I'm saying. But the but the message boards, the AM message boards, that's what they're pouring out there. Yeah. That and also there's the rumor that maybe someone interviewed with Heartline. I don't know. Does Trace represent Heartline? I don't know that. Me either. But I you know who else Trace represents? Who gets a gets a little gets a little shaky when things get kind of scary and likes to skedaddle? Hmm. Lincoln Riley. Come on now. <laughs> I mean, the defense is already set there. He wouldn't have to worry about the defense. They're good. Just keep the defensive staff and bring your offensive staff. Lincoln Riley to AM? Come on, it's man. Absolutely not happening. <laughs> no, I, I was just, I hope it happens. Gorky, thanks for the two. Washington wins. They're playing for everything. Gorky's not buying the upset alert. We'll see. I mean, I just think there's a bro, chance. That's, that's all. That's the face you make when you're about to find something, bro. I was just looking for Trace's, see if Trace had his, uh, Client list, list on his website. No, I did some digging yesterday. I know that I, I didn't see Heartline on any of the reported ones, but they're all a couple years old. I was trying to see if, if Dan Campbell was one of his guys too. Is that, I mean, the two major arm major agents are him and then Jimmy, right? Yeah, Jimmy uh, Sexton. Sexton. Mm-hmm. So, ooh, e Keel, thanks for the two. There's a lot of UM chat demons missing in action today. Yeah, where's yeah, Shane where, at? Where, hey, where, where the Michigan chats at? Them super chats from Michigan fans were going crazy to pass. Week and a half, two weeks. Yeah, where's Shane at? America's team. Where's Shane at? Oh, Ben, thanks for the five. Isn't it funny how OSU is painted the bad guy but by UM and their fan base? Yet yeah, they're the program that claim Ohio State is LOL high and mighty. How, how the high and high, mighty have fallen. Yeah. I'm with you. It is weird, bro. Because it's like Ohio State's still the bad guys. It's like you shoot somebody and it's like, why would you make me do that, Zach? Right. It's like, what? Bro, you shot them. Like, Ohio State has nothing to do with anything that's going on with Michigan right now, and they can't help but keep talking about Ohio State. Mm-hmm. It's like, and, and they'll come to us like, oh, Michigan's your whole show. Bitch, Michigan's involved in the biggest scandal I've ever seen. Of course we're going to talk about it. But why is Ohio State's name getting brought up? 
literally every college football show that's doing a show today, the major topic is going to be Michigan. Period. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> Silly. Who, who's Uncle T? Let me see. Uh, you know, I, I didn't pray for times like this, but I'm thankful they came. John, thank you for the five. Isn't the bottom line? Oh, no. <laughs> they said Uncle T is Tim Smith. That's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> they said the, the booster known as Uncle T's name is Tim Smith. That's what's reported on on three's Michigan site. So your dad helped bring down Michigan. I guess. Shout out to shout out to Pops. He's watching. Yeah, that's a real good legend job, right Daddy O. There. That's a real <laughs> legend right there, John. Thanks for the five. Isn't the bottom line that all pro all programs need to have a compliance department monitoring this stuff? Jim Harbaugh and University of Michigan can't put their heads in the sand. I mean, yeah, but you can't monitor it entirely. How? How are you going to do that? Yeah, like how do like you, you monitor sit in every meeting? Like go through everyone's phone. Like they have compliance departments, but you have to have a staff that somewhat cooperates. Mm -hmm. Like if. Back before NIL, if players started showing up in ridiculous cars, compliance would investigate it. But, like, this type of thing, I don't know. It's pretty easy to do behind the shadows. Ooh-wee. Ooh-wee. Kevin, thanks for the five. Y'all motherfuckers better stop hating on Goat Smith. Big ups, coach. You stay on point. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, you've been on it, bro. And you've been you've been ducking all the smoke. Well, not ducking all the smoke. I stay, hey, I stand, in the, yeah. I stand in the paint. It's funny. You ask for the smoke and they just like slowly go away. <laughs> it's more, it's more kind of what it's People been. are just so funny. And I found the picture of Kraken and now I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't talk shit to him anymore because he, he looks like the biggest fucking nerdy douchebag I've ever seen. Yeah, like it's not it. even fun at this point. Yeah, I get the 911 call now. Yeah, I get I, I get why he, why he, he, he tagged Pal Police uh, yesterday. Tagged him on Twitter. I was like, dude, I will call them right now. Like, what the fuck is wrong yeah, with you? Yeah. <laughs> Like we will, we will all kick it. DJ, thanks for the five. I will now be petty as fuck forever moving forward. Be ready. It's coming forever. Intolerable, just like you. Have like, a nice day, UM fans. Leave the Big Ten. I will just say, Chris. Oh, and it's a question for the chat, and then I'm gonna have you answer. On a scale of one to ten, how insufferable will Ohio State fans be if they beat Michigan? Because of the two years losing, because of this whole scandal, because of Michigan keep staying with Ohio State's dick in their mouth during this whole thing. How bad is it going to be? 11. I mean, it's, it's like a 1,084 bro, out of 10. Bro, it's like we're going to get case worthy because before these last two wins, Zach, and, and I'll keep it a being with you, there really weren't that many Michigan fans on Twitter. And I know people think <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm, I'm being super dead ass, bro. Like when you look at the accounts that call you names, that call me names, and you click on them, they're all created after November 2021. And they've been real yeah. loud. And they've been learning how to troll when everybody else already had a decade of trolling. Right. And now everyone's heard it for a long time. And it feels very cultish. Oh, God, like, like. Twitter gang wars, like they're gonna come get it back in blood in the most disrespectful way. So right now, like this is that ass. If you're a Michigan fan and you have any pictures of your family on, on that you ever put on the TO, put them away. <laughs> like dead ass, put them away. Anything you said, scrub the Twitter right now. Honestly, just deactivate it. Take the clink route <laughs> because it's gonna get real, real ugly. And and um and I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Jake, thanks for the two. Zach, I need advice to picking up an older woman. You need advice picking up an older woman? That ain't me, brother. I'm I'm use your knees. I just for the first time in June started considering a 30-year-old. <laughs> Only because she turned 30 and she's a badass woman. So I'm gonna keep her around, you know? Advice on an older woman. Older women, older women are the easiest. Get your they're grown, they're mature, they know what they want. Like, damn, just just keep it, keep keep it a hundred with them. Mm -hmm. Just be truthful, be honest. Tell them, damn, you look sexy. We we had some fun together. They'd probably be like, oh, let's do it. Done. Older women are the easiest. I wouldn't know. I'd be staying in my lane. You feel me? I, would, I, I wouldn't I. I would know any more, but when I was younger, you know. Yeah, no, no. I hear you. Heard on that. 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 Todd, thanks for the two. Hope they let Lincoln run Brown's red zone packages. Thoughts on that, Zach? Yeah. I, not against Michigan. I mean, that's a ter that's a ter he's, terrifying situation yeah, I love to get Lincoln. some meaningful snaps. I think he's, I mean, definitely athletic enough. Super. And it's all about ball security. And then are you really going to have him throw it? Because if you're not going to have him throw it, just run it with Travion Henderson, right? <laughs> like, if you're going to have him throw the ball in a game, in a meaningful situation, like this we did with Tebow, right? He ran it, ran it, and then we had some jump passes, some little shit. 
he he better be a grown ass eighteen year old. The thing about that red zone package that I would like to just put out there is that uh, it's not all about just pure athleticism. And I think I would argue that the thing that's more important in that package is like willingness to be tough and really stick your head in and, and mm-hmm. push forward. And that's never really been Lincoln's style running the ball. Mm-hmm. Like he's more kind of been an outside. I'm, I'm faster than all you guys. I'll outrun you guys. That's that's a real like Tim Tebow, like mm-hmm. go, like mm-hmm. hit a hole and try to run somebody over. And I'm not sure Lincoln has that quite yet. And honestly, I'm not sure his body's been prepared for that. Right. If that, if that makes sense, unless you think I'm out of pocket entirely. No. Shane, thanks for the two. Chris, eight days, eight more days. No excuses, homie. Hey, no. put, hey, I'm with you, Shane. Put up or shut up, right? It's time. No, heard you on that. Heard you on that. It's funny because I, I've, I mean, I've been, I've been standing that all year. Like no matter what, hardball on the sideline, off the sideline, no excuses. But also on the other side, no excuses for Michigan. Like if we, if Ohio State beats Michigan this year, even though Jim Harbaugh was on the sideline, you don't get to bring that up. Right. You don't get to bring that up mm-hmm. because that was his doing. And if there's no, there's no excuses both ways. No doubt. Chris, thanks for the 10. I've heard rumors about Chip Kelly being let go. Ooh, would Chip be willing to work under Ryan Day? That's Ryan's mentor. Chip seems to be the coach Ryan would give the offense to completely. Yeah, I don't I don't know. He might. I, I, I mean, he would definitely bring him in as an analyst. I don't know that he would hire him as the coordinator. Yeah, I mean, it'd be tough to hire him as the coordinator because you'd have to demote brian yeah it, that's not gonna happen i do think though he would trust chip to call the plays yeah tyree thanks for the five i work with clink's brother been giving him hell for weeks this is wild to watch yeah i mean this is like this is some shit you didn't even know it's one of those situations that as it's going on you're like i never even fathomed this was gonna possible like i didn't even think this would would, would ever be a thing yeah i didn't i did not think we would get there Drew, thank you for the five. Harbaugh versus Ohio State. Loss, 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 loss. Forfeit, cheated, cheated, suspended. <laughs> That's right. He doesn't get that win on his record, right? If they if they beat Ohio State. Damn. That one doesn't go to him. Sure doesn't. That is crazy. Is Sharon Moore going to be 1-0 or 0-1? Mm-hmm. That's the question. Ronnie Bravo, my guy. Thanks for the five. Michigan and Shakur got something in common. We putting folks to sleep. Ohio is next. Shakur's a boxer, Zach. Oh, I was like, I don't know who the fuck is like Tupac? <laughs> what you're dead <laughs> bro but here's the thing Shakur's a boxer yeah last night he had a pay-per-view fight i, I stayed i fucking love watching Shakur box bro yeah. it was the most boring fight ever the only people that went to sleep were the fans bro really like nobody got knocked out the the he's a champion bro everybody booed from round one to round 12 damn. people started leaving bro and it's in vegas damn like even steve kim i'm on the tl talking about that was a fucking terrible fight <laughs> terrible fight and that's the issue with boxing you fight twice a year and that's the performance you give us Hate it here. Zach, do you want to get a quick, quick word from our partner and finish out the show? All right, we'll be right back after this last commercial break. All right, Menace Army, if you need the perfect, the best bed sheets that I've ever used, at least, you got to go to trymiracle.com forward slash menace. Miracle made sheets are incredible. They, they were inspired by NASA. They have this, this fabric that is infused with silver to keep you cool at night to give you a great sleep. And it also self cleaning. It eliminates up to 99.7% of bacteria growth. I don't know what you do in the bed. Sometimes there's some, some, you know, some fluids, some stuff going on, and you don't want to need bacteria growing to give you acne, make you smell bad, and all that other stuff. These are the most luxurious and comfort and quality sheets I've ever owned. Justine and I use them every night. We had just ordered a second set so we can rotate them out. They're the best sheets I've ever owned. They're designed for your skin. Stop sleeping on bacteria, man. It is gross. So all you got to do is go to trymiracle.com slash menace. And not, they already have prices slash 40%. You'll get an additional 20% off with three free luxurious bath towels. They're really nice bath towels too. So all I need you to do, go to, go to trymiracle.com slash menace. Get that already slash 40% off pricing right now. Get an additional 20% off plus three free bath towels. Incredibly affordable, cheap, and they're the nicest sheets I've ever owned. Go check them out. Sound the alarms, Menace Army. This is this is one of those sponsor ad reads that you just have to pay attention to because of the offer that my bookie is giving us. This is exclusive to our platform. You cannot get this if you just go to their website. You have to use our promo code Menace. But they're giving you a 110% deposit bonus. That means if you put $1,000 in, they're going to give you $1,100 of free money. That's They've never done anything like this. And they've been a partner of ours for, I think, four years. They've never 
offered this a, a deposit bonus of this magnitude. So you have to go take advantage of it for all. If you're going to bet props, if you're going to bet ha- our handicappers picks, Mensa's props, if you're going to parlay anything, all your football parlay needs can be met at my bookie with free money and a shitload of it. Go over to my bookie right now. You, all you need to do is deposit 50 bucks. 50 bucks, they'll give you 55 for free. Up to $1,000. They'll give you 1100 free dollars. Go over to mybookie.ag. Use promo code MENACE right now to lock in this deposit bonus. It's only good for seven days. It's only valid through Sunday. So you have to get it this week. You can't wait. Go over to my bookie. Use promo code MENACE and get 110% deposit bonus. That is a shitload of money. I don't know what you're waiting for. It's the best place to bet online. Our partner, Tried and true, my bookie. Head over there now. Use promo code Menace to get that free cashish. Fine too. Bad, 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 bad. There bad, you go. Bad. My bad. We're Chris, just... Chris put the wrong ad read up, so we had to give you two. Yeah, had to give you two. Two for the price of one. Two for a dollar. Zach, do you want to hit some uh, of the Menace General, you know, mailbag questions? Yep. And then we'll hit some more super chats. We'll talk a little bit about Ohio State. I'm sure. Uh, a good question from our guy Eric. If JJ stays at Michigan for 2024. Who do the Giants go wide receiver in this upcoming draft and wait for the JJ for the following year? So Chris, uh, Chris, listen, Chris can only dream. Bro, I want them to draft Bo Nix. And then I want them to trade back into the first round and go get Roma Dunza. Yeah. And that's it. That's the one. Because I don't you're not gonna be you're not gonna be high enough for Marv. You're not gonna be high enough for maybe Malik Neighbors, but I think Rome is right there, I think, mm-hmm. personally. Or Keon Coleman. Or Keon, I think Keon, I don't think it would be high enough for Keon Coleman. Bro, Keon Coleman's gonna run like a fucking four three five. No doubt. Gonna measure in at six four. It's gonna they're they're gonna do the whole underwear combine thing. The 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 quads oh. are gonna be jumping out the gym. It's gonna be like it's gonna be competition about him or Marv. Not oh, gonna be competition sure. about him outside of the top ten. He's he's that good, even though he has not been as productive. Um, Sh- Chance, thank you. Do you think the person organizing that brought the scandal to light ever thought that there would be this many layers to it and it would get to the level that we are seeing now? Say it again. I'm sorry. Do I'm you think the person by Justine? Oh, <laughs> do you think the person who brought the scandal to light ever thought that it ran this deep? Basically, um, I would imagine they maybe not this deep, but they thought it was big enough to bring to light. Right? Mm-hmm. It was some little shit. You, be like, whatever, I'm not looking for that. But all of a sudden, you realize this is a pretty fucking big deal. It's an onion. But I don't know if anyone thought it ran this deep. No. I mean, and honestly, like, people haven't really kind of taken notice that his parents, Connor Stallings' parents that are middle school teachers, the same month they made that LLC with Blake Corum, both of their parents' mortgage got fully paid off. I'm just saying. Like, like both like, payments of over a hundred grand. Like, just follow the money. It's not that hard. Yeah. Follow it unless uh, unless Partridge destroys it before it gets there. Jay Ross, my guy, what, if any, advantages does Maryland have over Michigan? Where can they possibly find a win? Also, it would be a bad thing for Ohio State if Michigan loses this week. <laughs> would they have been more motivated? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it doesn't matter what happens this weekend. Mm-hmm. Next weekend is going to be absolutely like fucking war. Yeah. Because if Michigan loses, they need to beat Ohio State to get to the Big Ten Championship and keep their hopes alive. And it's a rivalry. So not, nothing really matters this weekend. It really doesn't. I, I don't. I guess Maryland to, Talia might be able to test the secondary through the air, but I think Michigan's secondary is phenomenal. They're I really think they good. have kind of one, really two, two, two guys, Macari Page and, and the other corner opposite Will Johnson, that are like they're not lockdown secondary players, but they, they could test them a little bit. But I, I, I believe in Michigan's defense. I really yeah, do, especially, especially their back end. I think Maryland would need a volume of contested catches. Yeah. They could just a high, high volume. And I don't, I don't, I don't see them being able to do that with, without the mistake. And, and, I mean, make JJ play like your Bowling Green or TCU. Yeah. Make him give the ball away. Yeah. That, that's really good. You got to blitz the shit out of him, right? You got to blitz mm. him until Michigan proves that they can protect in any front. He's just good against, he's been good against everything this year. Yeah. Well, I'm saying like against the blitz against Penn State, it oh, wasn't yeah. there. But, you know, you don't know, you don't know where the blitz is coming from. And additionally, that, <laughs> that right tackle is. Doo doo. Two pack of ass. Yep. Fucking stinks. Penguin, my guy, is Minnesota a sleeper team to give us a good game given where it is on the schedule? Almost every damn year, it feels like we have a close call and we're in a game in the fourth quarter the week before Team Up North. Yeah, last year was Maryland. We were in a, in a, in a little bit of a dog fight. Yeah, I mean, the answer is no. Um, Chris didn't give me my, my, my stats in here, but. Um, oh, fuck. <laughs> um, no, Maryland or, or Minnesota's fucking awful. I mean, they're awful. Mm-hmm. They're awful at everything. I mean, we saw them, right? We saw them multiple times this year. You're like, this is PJ Flex year, whatever. 
They are terrible at everything. Yeah, no, they they def they definitely are not very good. I'm I'm gonna give you these numbers real quick, and we'll circle back to it when we uh when we get there. Um, let's see what else we got from the Menace Generals. My bad, I'm all out of sorts right now. You're bro. good. Mm -mm -mm. Um, ooh, Nevada Cuck, thank you. How come we abandoned the orbit motion? We ran it against Wisconsin, and not much since. It seemed really effective with the most the multiplicity. Also, fuck those c words up north. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't notice that. I mean, I, I noticed them doing a couple of a couple times with X and hand him like stretch lead with with Chip Trainum leading. I, it's just every game plan is different, right? And they might have put it to bed a little bit to bring it back with some compliments against Michigan. You know, offensively you have packages, and you'll some you'll apply to different games, and then they might go away, and then you might be like, hey, let's bring that back and add this wrinkle and this wrinkle to use it against Michigan or whatever it is. How many wrinkles do you have in your playbook that you save for Michigan? Oh, you come up with a lot of them. Urban was the wrinkle guy. It was the wrinkle guy. Man, every day he used to come in like, hey, hey, Zach, check this out. What do you think about this? We <laughs> run this, do this, and bring the reverse off. And you're like, oh, that's pretty fucking cool, coach. Like, what am I saying? No, that sucks. Mm -hmm. But he came up with all kinds of wrinkles. <laughs> if you saw a trick play, I mean, outside of a conventional trick play, but if you saw like a badass reverse or like we ran a package against Maryland called the turtle, which was like fucking four handoffs and a shovel. And it was like, and Paris almost scored. The, those little trick plays when Urban was there, he he was the trick play mastermind. Talk about what that uh that trick play he had for Paris Campbell that yeah, seemed yeah. I think about I think about that one often. I do have the Minnesota numbers in there now, Zach. I mean, for those who are wondering if it could be a game, could be a trap game. There's nothing on paper or in film that would would suggest. Yeah, so, I mean, your thoughts. I mean, you just look at how bad they are, right? They're outside the top 100 in almost every offensive category: total offense, pass production, pass efficiency, scoring offense, third downs, red zone, big plays, both in the run game and the throw game. Like their offense is hot, hot ass. I mean, like hot ass. And their defense isn't much better. I mean, 98th total defense, 87th rushing defense, 100th passing defense. I mean, if they give Ohio State a game. Ooh, it's it's not gonna happen. I think Ohio's I, Bucks by fifty. <laughs> That's a real one. That's a real one. We I mean, usually they're troll Bucks by fifty, but that one. But this one's a real one. That one was a real one. Um, our guy JT, how does Justin Fry game plan for him's been going up against the team up north's defensive tackles? <clears throat> Those dudes are gonna feast on that boy. Yeah, I hate to break it to you. I think I think Carson Hensman's got. I think he's gonna be benched. I don't think he's gonna be the starting center. He got benched on this weekend, and I didn't realize it playing. I thought they just were shaking it up but the last like three drives that the that the starting offensive line was in Matt Jones was in at center and, and Carson was out <coughs> excuse me yeah I do worry about it, bro those those defensive tackles are freak shows, if you go bro. in the film room They're I mean freaks. I sit there and break it down I start what once Matt Jones went to center the, the whole interior offensive line looked better they really did um gravity our guy McCord is clearly getting better, but what is his actual ceiling? Could he turn himself into a Mac Jones? And do you think a Mecca will recognize that it isn't his best interest or it, that it is in his best interest to come back for 2024? Um, so that's, that's a good question. Is it in his best interest if Kyle's still the quarterback? Is it because of injury or is it because of quarterback play? And I think we can assume Kyle will have a nice level up this offseason. So I think it's in his best interest to come back. Um, and I don't know what McCord's ceiling is. I mean, you watch that game that they just played against Michigan State. His ball placement was great. He was getting the ball out on time. He showed an ability to kind of make a play on the little shovel to Cade Stover. He was missing some reads, but that is very developmental, right? Like he'll eventually master the offense at a higher level. So I don't know what his ceiling is because he's got arm talent. I, I I worry about his toughness and how how nervous he is sometimes. But that comes with maturity. I think he's got a high ceiling. He's just oh, he's just a ways away from it. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think they're both out of here. That's my hot take. I think they're both out of here at the end of the year. Kyle is not leaving, Chris. I think, I think they're both out of here. You Sometimes you have these takes, and it's like, we don't ever come back to him because it no, obviously doesn't happen. We're not, we're not coming back to it. But I, I think I think he's out of here. And I do when, think when after the 2024 season, he announced he's coming back for his fifth year, I'm bringing it up then. <laughs> I think he's out of here. I think he's he is JT here. Barrett. I'm just saying. But he I can't just, run split zone. I just think he's up out of here. And I think that uh, Mitchell Melton is going to be the guy in the Michigan game. Mitchell Melton, player of the game on defense in the Michigan game. And Kyle McCord is one and done because he is Dwayne Haskins. He's that good. Yeah. We'll never say that. That's, That's basically, what, basically yeah. what you said. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But I also watch a whole bunch of mid-quarterbacks get drafted every year. 
Yeah, every year. That's you true. Me? Every every single year. Um, I'm going <laughs> to get some more Super Chat, Zach. Maybe talk a little bit here and there about some about some things. But, yeah, no, no, bro. Kyle's about here, bro. Second rounder. He's Andy Dalton. Yeah. That sounds good. He's Andy Dalton. Just, I'll take your word for it, Chris. Just the Burnett version. <laughs> Clayton, thank you for the five. This, the day of reckoning we have been waiting for. Can't wait to watch the show's reaction to the offseason NCAA punishment to Michigan. Bye-bye, Jimmy. I don't think Jim Harbaugh knows the favor he did us. Oh, massive favor. I mean, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be lit. Like, I've been doing all our revenue projections, trying to expand and build the company. I need to change them. Like, mm-hmm. February's not going to be a down month. Mm-hmm. February's going to be a banger. <laughs> February's going to be the drama alert. What? It's going to be like, all right. I'm going to call the NCAA like, hey, just let, I need to know like what month you're thinking because I'm going to inflate our revenue a little bit that month in our budget. Yeah, I got to give him the home with Pete Thamel. I want him to start dropping his reports at 11.50. Yeah. Just every every weekday. I, need, I'm, I'm a, I, I used to talk to Pete. Maybe I should reach back yeah, out. Hey, Pete, Did I ever tell you about the one time? I mean, this is right when I got fired. Started my podcast mm-hmm. and it was like nobody was allowed to talk about it, right? But it was going nuclear. Yeah. And he tweeted something, or he posted something on his Instagram story from his camera roll about something else, totally unrelated. And but he left his camera roll up, and there was three different screenshots of my episodes in his camera roll. Oh, I'm like, that's hey, fire! Hey, this man's listening and is sharing it with people. I appreciate you, Pete. You're a real one. That's fire. Hey, Pete, me and my guy Ron will make you a Buckeye jersey if you just tap in with us. Like, well, twenty three Thamel on the back, and we'll send oh, it yeah. over to you. Doing a great job. Clayton. Oh, that's already CF Punk. That's my guy. So so here, here's a fun story for you, Zach. So Punk pretends on Twitter like he's a Georgia fan. Uh-huh. But he lives in Columbus and has season tickets to Ohio State. That's awesome. Yeah. So he's, he's really just an Ohio State fan. I'm just waiting for him to admit it. Um, <laughs> Jay, th- Jay and Jim trying real hard to be Joe and Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Jesus. We try to stay away from politics here. I was not prepared for that. Was not prepared for it. Jim, thanks for the five. Do you think CJ Hicks will be a Raquan McMillan slash Baron Browning type of talent, or will he end up being Curtis Grant? And we're not doing any more fucking y'all, Curtis y'all Grant. Love, slander, y'all love to hate bro. on y'all Curtis Grant like it, he wasn't bro. a great player. I mean, no fucking sense. Um, I think CJ Hicks is going to be really good. Watching him at the end of that uh, Michigan State game, he is. He just got to figure it out. And mm-hmm. we we did a whole video on why he's not playing because everyone was freaking out that he should be playing. He shouldn't be playing, but man, is he going to be good? He, look, he definitely looked good um, at times. He had, what, two tackles for a loss there? Mm-hmm. I mean, he had like one he was... play. You're like, ooh, got my dick hard. Shreggy? <laughs> Skyler, thanks for the five. First super chat. Been watching for years. <laughs> what do you say to Team Up North fans who claim that the Buckeyes only won because Harbaugh wasn't on the sideline? Man, <laughs> honestly, suck my dick. We won. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I don't, what are you, you going to say? Okay, use that excuse. That's fine. I mean, you know, it, it's how it goes. That's the drama of rivalries. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, where did my Akron homie call you? Like, go eat a dick burger. Like, he, he's he's not a silent if he doesn't cheat. Like, And it's all good. You still, fly- you, you still yeah. caught the L. Like, go cry to your mama. Like, that shit will not save you from what's coming. Like, go eat a dick burger. Michael, thanks for the two. Was the PI firm U.S. Integrity? They handled the betting. It seems like that is the direction it was in. But the thing is, and... They definitely got involved from from what I've been told, and their their responsibility is integrity of the game. So I guess they could stretch that to this sign stealing operation. Mm-hmm. But it's they're they're mainly trying to keep integrity of the game for bets and gambling. But you also got to look at, uh, at the against the spread numbers before Connor Stallions and after. So Vegas has a vested interest. So I, I would imagine U.S. Integrity might have played a part in this. Yeah. I think they may have played a part, but they wouldn't have done the whole deep digging. To me, it's probably, they, hey, NCAA, something's off over oh, here. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then the NCAA is more likely the one that hired a PI firm because, they, you know, you know, right? Like well, that, they, they or they they have. The, yeah, the they have has one. an investigative mm-hmm. unit. Yeah, but their investigative unit is dog shit. They got new leadership. Oh, they're, they're, doing, probably, they're doing pretty good right now. They are. They're uncovering some shit. Man, they got the interest of the test beforehand. And yeah. they 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 use Twitter. It's funny because Twitter helped. Right. I mean, you think about the investigation unit that went down mm-hmm. to Miami. Like, everybody knew Miami was doing this shit. And they're like, ah, we couldn't find anything. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Man, where the fuck you come <laughs> from? What do you mean by that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thanks for the two. Why would Ryan Day do this? <laughs> <laughs> the villain. The villain. Michael, thanks for the two. They found spying looking for point shaving? Yeah. I guess. I, I don't think it was point, point so, shaving. I don't believe it was for point shaving. I just think 
they're responsible to make sure the game is has has some integrity to it so that, that honestly so vegas doesn't lose mm -hmm. <laughs> shannon thanks for the five people talking about nashrick if we beat team up north it's michigan's fault so if we beat them it's still a legit win i'll take it yeah. osu sidewalk alumni for life i don't believe that any any of these games should have an asterisk but if you're going to asterisk any game it's going to be 21 and 22 when they were yeah. cheating right <laughs> like it's not going to be this one where they got busted and had to their head coach suspended like and, that's just that's asinine right and, and also like michigan's going to go into the game as the favorite the other part of that oh absolutely no. so like i it just i don't know legion thanks for the 20 Reality finally setting in for the cheaters up north. This has been a great three weeks. Shout out, Menace. Hell yeah, it has. This has been nuclear. We November is about to be wild when I run the analytics on December 1st. Yeah, this, I mean, this has this has been nuts. Jared, thank you for the five. Wouldn't Quorum be a good target to rats? This is LLC violation, probably causes eligibility questions. That was the only player on the team where I was like, okay, maybe that's who got offered immunity. Ooh, Mighty Mouse? Little man. Little Mighty Mouse. Little Mighty Mouse. Honestly, if him and Roman Wilson both walked in the same room, I couldn't tell you who was who. Yes, you could. Look at their lower body. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're what right. A, Blake Corum looks, like, looks like he ate <laughs> Roman Wilson. One of them looks like that fucking girl that was fucking Zion on the bottom half. Her name is Mariah Mills. I don't. I will never remember her name. I will never submit that to the memory bank. But Blake Corum got Mariah Mills' lower half. Bro, I remember certain things in this life. It's plays and artists. Porn stars. Just call them what they are. They're not, they're artists. Artists. DJ, thanks for the five. You guys are so wrong. This is a collusion to attack the lone wolf. <laughs> You're driving a narrative. UM is the victim here. LMFAO. Right. This is so victim. funny. Bro, I hope they win this year, bro, because I think their program is going to get blasted into oblivion. Like I, I don't hope they win this year. I, I don't really care. I mean, <laughs> I, I certainly want Ohio State to win, but it'll be good drama either way. Well, it's like they won't ever win after this. Like, it's over. Don't be so dramatic, Chris. It's not over. Bro, they're about to be the University of Chicago. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I think what comes of this is a level up. Chris Partridge was an ass football coach. They're going to get a better linebacker coach. They're going to be better next year because of it. But, but uh, you're right. But it's like Chris Partridge with Connor Stallions is, is, is a – net gain right we'll see that's absolutely a net gain connor and chris is net gain that is it's, it's that simple yeah i mean i'd say so because it's like it's like if you're walking up the steps chris partridge is a two is the two steps backwards connor is the three steps forward so you're gaining one that's fair kevin thanks for the two y'all lit as fuck today man how could we not be yeah bro it's a dunk on bitches friday mm-hmm J.A., thanks for the five. Hold on. Before, before you read it, I need every one of you fucking scumbag Michigan fans who was every time we did a show, every time we talked about the scandal, and you wanted to come dunk on us on how we were wrong and then accuse me of being a wife beater, X, Y, Z, coming at me personally, some of you including my kids, I need all of you to come over here and put both of those lips on my cock and suck the fuck out of it because y'all are a bunch of dick-sucking dick motherfuckers. I didn't know what the fuck you were going to say. <laughs> Not even the Lord himself could have prepared me for that. <laughs> I need it. Uh, uh, J8, my guy, thanks, thanks for the five. Uncle T, LOL, the new Ed Martin. Tim Smith, you didn't know that my father was a Michigan grad and he's a big booster. Tim Smith, look him up. My mom also went to Michigan. Look at it. Hey, and for all those Buckeye fans who say, I don't even, I don't do anything for Ohio State, but talk shit. Look at this. See this scandal? My daddy did it. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. We're some Michigan men. Michigan men. <laughs> Tony, thanks for the 20. Has anyone checked on the Michigan boards yet? May want to send help. Great show as always, guys. And film room is must see. Get in if you're not already. I'm trying to, I try, I'm, I, I always feel like a douchebag salesman, but like, if you sign up and it is not what I'm saying it is, I will send you your money back. Like, there's yeah. no risk. Bro, the Michigan message boards are melting down. And honestly, bro, like, you know what I wish? <clears throat> the, the only thing I want to come from all this is I want Michigan to be okay. But I want their fan bases to the hostility that they have towards us, the, the wild bunch, the, the culty bunch, have that same hostility to Sam Webb. Yes. To whoever. Because like the, the, they're we're, at least we're telling you the truth. They're lying to you. 
They're lying to you behind a paywall, covering up for pedophiles, lying to you some more, blaming Ryan Day. Like, holy hell, like, every time you guys try to dunk on us for kind of talking about it on the show, it's always about you guys don't know what you're talking about and then cite something from one of these guys. Cite. Like, at what point, like, if you, look, if you have a shame, shame kink, just say that. I get it. Like, if you want to be embarrassed, say that. I get it. But if you really just, want to talk about what's going on, it's real easy. Like, we're talking about what's going on, and you keep citing the same shit. And to the point where I've seen some of you guys under Washington Post articles talking about you guys don't know what you're talking about. Like, they don't double-check check and triple-check shit. Yeah. That's some people underneath Fox posts. Like, not Fox Sports. Nigga, the big Fox. Talking about, <laughs> talking about you guys don't know what you're talking about. It's like, yeah, you're right, because Sam Webb is more plugged in and knows who the PR Just, for, PI for. I had a conversation with somebody about a, a, two months ago about – this platform, this business that, mm -hmm. that, that I created. And, and, and they made the point that like the difference between menace and all these other services that cover these teams, right. Is you pay them to be told something. Right. And it's a lot of time, like you're paying Sam Webb to be lied to yeah. like, at this platform. You're paying for clarity. Like you're paying to watch, watch actual film, not listen to some guy talk about it. This player's really good. No, no, no. Come here. Come here. I'll show you if he's good or not. Like, that's the difference. Like, like we nothing but love for sex workers. But really, what what you do when you recite stuff that Sam Webb, Scam Webb says is you are ordering a prostitute and asking her to tell you how big your dick is. That's what you're doing. That's what's literally going on. You're paying her to lie to you. That's yes. what it is. Yes. That's literally what's going on. I I, I follow it now. At yeah, first, I was, I was like, what? Yeah. That's a wild analogy. No, it, no, that's that's what it is. Cause like you're you're paying Sam Webb to lie to you. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Scam artist of the year, bro. A whole bunch of them. Allegedly scam artists. Allegedly. Allegedly. Elk stake to the five. On the third day of Christmas, my, my true love, love gave, gave to me. me three years of cheating, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a stallion's tree. <laughs> I used to pray for times like this. Oh, man. Nick, thank you for the 10. Per a new report, NCAA has handed Michigan evidence that a booster-funded stallions and partridge tried to destroy the evidence after the scandal broke. Your thoughts, Coach? What does this ultimately mean? <laughs> a lot of people are cooked. Anybody with direct evidence is absolutely cooked. Hibachi, bro. Like, what the fuck? We told y'all before. It's hibachi. Like, it's hibachi chicken. Yeah, Not even like filet. It's the chicken. It's the chicken? It's the... <laughs> For the whole fam, bam. Yeah, chicken is a little, it's a, it's a little fucking, whatever those white straw things are. <laughs> Nuts. And it was all Ryan Day's brother. DJ, thanks for the five. The only turkeys this Thanksgiving are the UM fans who believed you are truly elite. The arrogance bug strikes again. Can't wait to see you in the pack, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling a Chris Ball is Chris Ballsack. <laughs> that's the other michigan dude i don't know who that is oh he's the one that um quickly said we knew about this weeks ago he's the other one it's oh, like yeah. alejandro and him were real loud about they knew about the uh the pedophile but didn't want to say anything no, like, of course like why would you brag about that i would not tell anybody like what the fuck <laughs> gorky thanks for the two each week for itself you uh, washington d is bad but just win now it is win mode it is the playoffs start now for those top four. Oh yeah top five Top five. Yeah, you're right. Top five. Because Washington should be the top number four team. But, you know, you know how it goes. Jared, thanks for the 10. Michigan is my squad. I'm going to stick beside them. We can crack the jokes and speculate all deserved. But Ohio State still has to come see them in Ann Arbor. That's yes, a, no. That's a fact. It's a fact. It's still going to be a really good game. Michigan's still going to be favored. They still have a really good football team. I hate to bring it to you. None of this shit that we're talking about is going to matter. No, none when of they it. they blow none that whistle and go like this. It literally means absolutely nothing. Um, but I am glad you're going to stick beside them. But they cheated and now it's not now it's not speculation we now know they cheated allegedly david thanks for the two joel Klatt's point of view has changed all of a sudden that's weird has it really mm -hmm. imagine that boy i see what is it i see uh, i see what you did there yeah oh i see what you did there hey right. what do you mean by that what do you mean by that 18 roll. Thanks for the 10. I'm thankful as hell that I stumbled onto the show in the spring. I got to genuinely fuck with you guys before all the in season madness and this team up north gift from the football gods. Keep cooking. We appreciate you. That's right. As we well, say, man, be a friend, tell a friend. 
All you got to do is share this video. Hit share, copy the link, text it to a group chat. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, this show's fire. Or whatever you think. Like, these two are idiots. I don't care. Just be a friend, tell a friend. No, that's real. And honestly, like, the offseason, it's, like, where the real homies are made. Because the offseason is, like, us and, like, our closest thousand homies. Yeah, and, it and, really is. And now it's, like, everybody's bumping. And, and we see you and we recognize that. And we really appreciate each and every one of you. that. Like, fucking you know, it's I, I, and I know it's all timing. But, like, right now there's 2,300 people in here. There will be 30,000 people that watch this show. I, w I wish they could all come hang out at the same time, live with same. us. I mean, a lot of times when I get ready for the show, bro, I think about kind of what that means and how cool everybody is. And it's, like, it's like we do a show. Imagine you're, you're at a venue and, and – 30,000 people are there, but we get to talk and interact with all of them mm -hmm. as we do the show. Like, it's just, it's so cool. And I'm so thankful, but it's still fuck Michigan and all the Michigan. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I, I can't say fuck all the Michigan fans. Late mom. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, thank you for the two. Nebraska saying, give me the other half of that ring. What? What? Oh, Michigan's national championship ring. Oh, <laughs> I'm here for that. A I was like, dog, Nebraska ain't getting no jewelry. What the fuck? Yeah, they're not getting a motherfucking thing. Thanks for the two. Craig Krenzel ran more than McCord, LOL. It's crazy. I was just, And I wasn't going to put it in there, but Chris, when I was looking at all the analytics. Chris and I were talking about it. I think he averages like 0 0.6 yards after contact. Yeah. Essentially, when he gets tackled, he just falls. Like, he goes straight down. Literally, that's hard to average that little after. It contact. is like you think like if you just have a little strength to you, like you're going to yeah you're gonna get one full yard. It's like you get touched and play dead. Yeah. Mike, thanks for the five. Remember, Uncle Joe Biden didn't know what Hunter was doing. LOL. Hello, Papa Jim. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. Ron, thanks for the 10. Jay Money, prodigal son, next to get the hatchet. That's what that's what the rumor is. Yeah. And that's, bro, at that point, Jim can't survive. Like, that's it, bro. The only, right. way does, the only way he doesn't survive is if the NCAA gives him a show cause because Michigan is not backing down from this motherfucker. But would they fire his son? Oh, yeah. And not him? Uh, yeah, they would They would have to if he was bankrolling it. They will absolutely give Jay Harbaugh a show cause. Yeah, if he was I, bankrolling I just think it. they would just both get fired. Like, it, like he can't. No. I don't know. Nope. Future Black, thanks for the five odds on favorites of getting the Michigan documentary 30 for 30, minus 115. Netflix, plus 250. Hulu plus 315, Peacock plus 500, YouTube plus 1500. Who gets it, bro? Who gets the documentary? I think 30 for 30. Here he is. You want to see my dad? There he is. Can you see him? Nope, Move not really. Over. Tim Smith. Michigan That's man. That's the guy. Michigan man. Good shit, pops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I, I, think, I think probably ESPN gets it 30 for 30. Yeah. I don't think who else could even get it. Nah, it's really just them. <laughs> Steph, thanks for the five. Team Up North use Hunter Biden's laptop. CNN exclusive. Love the show, fellas. Go Bucks. We appreciate you, man. You guys are crazy. Man, bro. they're making this about the Bidens. Now. Right. <laughs> Derek, thanks for the two. Any chance UT beats UGA? No. Not a fuck, bro. They might. They're going to get fucking smoked. Bro. Tennessee hasn't beaten a soul. Yeah. Fucking smoked. I can't get that Florida game out of my mind. Bro, I think Tennessee is awful. Don, yeah. thanks. For, I, there's no, they're the worst top 25 team. No, that's not true. Who's worse than them? They're the worst top 20 team. There's 10 teams in the top 25 that are worse than Tennessee. No way. I refuse, yes. I refuse to believe Tennessee it. would beat Arizona by 40. I, no. I don't believe you. <laughs> they were Tulane. I don't even, I'd have to have the top Tulane 25. Tulane clears them. Man, get the fuck out of here. Tulane beat USC last year. I don't give a shit. Chris Pratt, the chosen one. No, he's not. I lied. Don, thanks for the two. Day loses three in a row plus a backup coach. Then what? Again, I don't think the coach matters. Like, I, I don't know how you feel, but people were trying to get me to admit that this would be like he is a fireable offense if they lose this year. I don't. I don't think it is. I think Michigan's a really good football team. Yeah, Do you I, think, I think it's a I fireable think, offense. No, I mean I watched John Cooper win two games in fucking eleven years or twelve years. Yeah. Also, where were the Michigan fans with this energy when Jim lost seven straight? Right. Like, where was that? Um, do, 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 do. Ray, thanks for the five. Love the show. No hardball. That's fine. Chris, will you have an excuse when Michigan wins? No. Why? Literally, what have I kept saying? But when Ohio State wins, I expect $600. It's $500 from you. And then I think our guy Jordan has another 100 in it. Come correct. Paul, thanks for the five. This whole Team Up North saga is playing out like the movie Enemy of the State. 
never seen it. Have yeah, you I've seen never that seen movie? it. Uh-uh. Is it worth a watch? I'll give it a watch. Sounds like it is. Yeah. Q, thanks for the two. Let's sign the extension. Jim oh, Harbaugh. Harbaugh. Well, where'd that extension go? You think it's still on paper? Or do they shred it? Like, we'll revisit that later. They got to rip that bitch up. Light that bitch on fire. Hey, they don't even need to light it on fire. Just leave it in Ann Arbor. Everything's yeah. on fire in Ann Arbor right yeah, now. The whole thing's on fire. <laughs> that bitch is soot. For the documentary, bro, whoever's going to get it has to start getting now. Like, if someone can get footage of them taking down the Big Ten banners when they actually do it, like from down below, if anybody films that, that'll make the documentary. So if you want to do, if you want to make the documentary, you want your work to make it. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Keel, thanks for the two. Michigan fans live in the chat, but never putting money up. He called you broke. Oh my God. Broke ass Michigan fans in here. Mm -hmm. I'm sweating. It's a, it's a, it's a Friday bro, for real. <laughs> I'm really sweating, bro. It's like, like my chest is sweating. Jordan, thanks for the two. Drop the pick of Kraken. LMFAO, bro, was Tom Spicy. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm not going to fat shame, body shame, dork shame. I'm not going to do any of that. Is I he's a fat dorky motherfucker I was though. Say, I, was about to say, I hear you on the other ones, bro, but I'm not even gonna hold you. I believe in dork shaming whenever someone talks about someone's kids, bro. Yeah, I'm with you. you but I mean? you know, it's one of those things like you 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 come out, you talk shit about my kids. Like, I don't really give a fuck who you are. Like, you gotta see me now. Like, yeah. and you may be some big bad motherfucker that's gonna beat my ass. That's fine, but I'm not gonna not stand up for my kids. And so, you know, this dude's a, a troll. Like, I don't know who he is. He could be a fuck, he, he could be my badass MMA fighter. I don't know. When I saw him, I was like. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. No wonder you want to call the cops. <laughs> Makes sense. Dude can't have bigger than a two-inch penis. He just can't. Makes sense. He can't see it either. I just, I'm just, sometimes I just wake up and I'm thankful I'm not him. You feel me? Oh, I, every day now I will. That's really what it is, bro. Like, I saw the picture. I'm just so thankful. And with Thanksgiving coming up, I'm just going to keep remembering that. So, <laughs> shout out to my mom. Thank you for me not being him. Like, shout out to Pops. Like, shout yeah. out. To, I never met you, Pops, but thank you that, that you didn't turn. Like, I'm not big. Like, bro, like, thank you. Yeah. Like, just, I I got better genes than him. Yeah. Like, I just. Shout out to the lineage. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I, next, if he ever, if I see him tweet again, I'm just going to say, like, bro, like, I won this exchange. He's going to be like, what do you mean? It's like. <laughs> I mean, he. he like, <laughs> I, like, I really, like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Like, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for the two. Texas A&M, Cliff Kingsbury? That would be the most Texas A&M shit to do, It bro. really would. Texas Ties. Was that Texas Tech? Coach Johnny Manziel there. Coach Johnny. Put Johnny on staff. Johnny quarterback coach. He, he reached out. He said nah. he wants to help. No, Johnny's going to be the NIL motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he said, bro, I was doing this shit before it was, like, before anybody. See, this fundraising shit, when it comes to it, I'm the very <laughs> best. had that brick. I can't hear you. I lied to everybody. My family doesn't come from oil money. So good. <laughs> um... Eden, thanks for the five. Why are you guys wishing for Michigan to fall? I hate Ohio State, but I want them at their best. No, I don't want Michigan to fall, and I don't think they're going to. Chris is the one that's he's just on that real real time hating shit. I hate everything about you, niggas. <laughs> your smile, your laugh, the Not way me. you walk, the way you take L's. Like, if you can really step back, and I know you don't want to lose on either side, but like, do you know how much better the rivalry is right now than it was for fucking ever? Like, so much better. Like, college football is more fun. This game is more fun. Because for 20 years, it was like, yeah, but Michigan sucks. Now it's like, both teams are good. This, this is good shit. I wake up every morning, and after I thank God for not making me look like Kraken, I, I wish that something bad happens to Michigan that day. See. Bro, it's all it's all for jokes. It's all it's all a bit. And part, honestly, bro, like, I, I, want, Michigan to be, I want Michigan to be good. I mean, yeah, honestly, I as, as, a, as a business guy. But I think what we like, what, I, what, I, what I'm enjoying the most is not the Michigan – downside that i think is coming i think i wish bad stuff happened like i i i just hope the michigan fan base that is so up sam webbs and chris ballas's ass i want them to feel things crumbling down mm -hmm. like for the football team i want them to be good like, I've, yeah. I've always been on that i've always kind of stood by that but it also like is, is a part oh, of the oh, part of the urban's bit. over here fighting twitter wars hold on urban's on twitter where is, where is it at? I, it just showed me his tweet. Hold on. Urban. Not the Herbster. Herb Herb Street. What? I can't hear it. Urban Meyer on Big Ten Network tonight. I love Ryan Day. I do. But with Jim Harbaugh not coaching, this is no, a No, bro. That was Yoder trolling. <laughs> he got Urban. He got Yoder Urban replied to it. 
Oh my God, Yoder. No. Urban. All Urban. right, bro. All right, we got. All right, so look. Hey, Urban, Urban quote tweeted and said, "Complete nonsense. Never said this. Never would. Go Bucks." Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no way Yoder got Urban. That's amazing. So for the backstory, Yoder will do this thing. He will pull I'm a texting him right now. Yoder will pull a video, and he'll mute the audio and just put in quotation what the video says, and people won't click on the video, so they'll just assume that they said it without actually listening to it. They caught Urban. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> Yoder for the dub. You see yeah. why we have him on? He's a Michigan guy I really fuck with. He doesn't pr protect pedophiles. He doesn't. That's he the... All right, Chris, keep it moving and a grooving. Moving and a grooving. Kurt, thanks for the five. How ugly will the big house be over under five fights? Over? What? Over under five fights on the field or in each section? There should be a hundred fights in the tailgate lots. Like, it's mm -hmm. going to be. I, I wouldn't go. I'm not going. And if you go, wear a GoPro, and I'll pay you 50 bucks per fight you get on film. You don't even need a GoPro. Just wear the little, my little Ray-Ban glasses. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, 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 as long as we get to post the compilation of it and you don't post it, I will pay per video. Oh, absolutely. I will we, pay yeah. per video. You video a real fight that no one else has a video yep. of, we'll pay for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, but we're not citing, don't, don't start the fight. Yeah, wait, don't start like, the don't. fight. I just, if you see it happen and take a video and send it to us. If you start the fight, I'm going to fine you. Yeah, right. <laughs> just to be clear, we're not promoting fighting. John, they did the two. Answering Keel's challenge. Just win, baby. Go blue. John's been in here for a while, bro. John's been in the paint. Yeah, I, I like John. Keel, thanks for the two. Respect, John. Was hoping for some disrespect, though. Yep. Uh, shout out Keel, bro. He's funny as shit. Johnny, thanks for the 10. I finna. About to be insufferable as fuck. Talk, taking it to 11. Dead ass. I love the show. <laughs> Fail to the cheaters, go Bucks, OH. Hell yeah. I O. There you go. Lee, thanks for the five. The cheaters fucked around and now they are finding out. Never let them live this down. Never, Never ever. Keel, thanks for the two. Donate this to Blue Wolverine. He needs to eat today. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz. Keel, thanks for the two more. Michigan NIL deals need to be with puffs and tissues. That's fire. Puffs tissues. That's fire. That's fire. a that's a good that's a good insult. Andy Nash, thanks for the two. That Netflix documentary on UM is gonna be wild. I actually can't wait, bro. Thing is, like, we'll never know the full story. Like, we'll never, we'll just know what they can prove. And it's always like much deeper than they can prove. And I think that's that's kind of easy to to see. Yeah. Ben, thank you for the five. Longtime listener, love the show. My wife doesn't even watch and is loving all this fuck Michigan and co bucks. Oh, Hell ladies. yeah. Well, tell your wife to watch. We need more female listeners. Yeah, we do. But we, we appreciate our loyal ones. We got some bad some badass women that watch the show. We absolutely do. We absolutely shout do. out to the queen. Mm-hmm. The Squid, thanks for the five. Have you thought about bringing Yoder back on for a segment before the game? Would be fun to see you two trolling back and forth. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'll, uh, we'll, 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 I'll we'll what I'll it. probably end up doing, and I need to, I need to obviously see if he has availability. I'm sure he will because he, he loves to come on and, and we have high, high respect for each other. But I'll probably put it on our Thanksgiving show. Oh, that'd be really awesome. That'd be really awesome. Thanks, Chris. I'm all for that. I'll be back home in Akron eating the turkey and celebrating Watch. mom's b-day right yeah yeah mom's birthday is uh next wednesday gang so i did not get her a present yet Thank i don't you. know i don't know what to get her i don't know maybe i'll wait till saturday get her a new putter for the putting green gosh she didn't even have a putter to begin with so wow. that's honestly the seems like a waste of a putting green that's what i'm saying bro my mom bought this house with a putting green and like <laughs> oh. you don't butt <laughs> oh wait hey my 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 guy mike said that's his birthday too he'll be in cleveland mike if you want to come to the party on saturday slide 50th birthday party shout out ma hell yeah um oh yeah we already read that one do 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 jesse thanks for the five chris how old were you when you lost your v card jesus christ what well i'm still a virgin oh here we go so haven't lost it i'm currently what 26 turn 27 next month gang rc thanks for the two is cardell with upside, a reasonable comp for DJU. Similar body types, definitely. Yeah, that's fair. Huh. I don't know that he has the arm that Cardio had. Cardio had one of the strongest arms I've ever seen. Yeah, like up there with like Jamarcus Russell. And yeah, Ryan like Mallet. fucking crazy arm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. ZZ, thanks for the five. I think it's unfair that Carson Hinsman started as a freshman. He was always under a microscope here. That's two years earlier than most linemen start. Redshirt freshman, though, right? Yeah, right. I mean, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. I, maybe he shouldn't have started. And I'm not saying he's not going to be a great player. I, I just evaluate what I see right now. Yeah, and that's honestly like the other team doesn't care that he's a retro freshman. 
Oh, like, but like at the same with, time, this is Ohio State. Right. Well, how old was Paris Johnson when he started? Exactly. Red, a sophomore, true sophomore. True he, sophomore. He start, like, Year he, two. He played a lot in that game against Clemson, too, when uh, when, when someone went down and played really well. Yeah. Like, Donovan guys, Jackson, I think, it was year two also. Yeah, like guys don't get passes. No. Taylor Decker, year two. Mm-hmm. Pat Elfline, year two. Like, for the really, really good ones, the NFL ones, it's usually year two. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a different standard. Jesse, thanks for the two and a real question. I appreciate that. USC or UCLA? I think, uh, I don't know if I can know. UCLA. I'm taking that. I honestly have no idea. I'm taking USC. I stopped. I, I never watched UCLA uh, other than some highlights here and there. And I stopped studying USC like week five. Mm-hmm. Always balling. Thanks for the five. What's up, guys? My dad watches your show every day. Brings you all up when we talk about Ohio State. Can I get a shout out for Jeff? Hell yeah, Jeff. We appreciate you. Not only for watching, but for getting your son in here. Yep. If everyone would do that, we'd double in size. Double in size. Thank you, Jeff. We, uh, we do appreciate you. We appreciate you. Uh, David, thanks for the five. Any chance Stallion taking up residence in Portnoy's or Deese's basement? It's probably. I bet. I bet you Dave hires him. Yeah, I mean, Dave has a job for bro. Yeah, cheaters get statues. The Michigan man. Mm-hmm. Shout out to our guy Chris who was giving Dave hell at Canes. Hell, yeah, our guy Chris was their viral video. Yeah, he's a part of the Menace Army. Menace Army giving him right. hell at Canes. Go look at the video. That's right. one of our people's. Salty, thanks for the five. Michigan would still be cheating if they were not caught. Go Buckeyes. Of course they would. They would absolutely be still. I mean, they, they fucking bought tickets to the Penn State game. Right. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Nathan, thanks for the two. NFL is done drafting one-year starters. McCord returns. <laughs> of course he does. He's not coming back. <clears throat> like, never mind. He's not ready. He's. It's, it's it, not even yeah. a conversation. It's, just, it's a bit, guy. It's a joke. Yes. Like, it, like we know. <laughs> Add in the quarterback draft class? Come yeah. on. Like, like, Zach would not want to do a show with me if I firmly believe. No. Like, and, like, if I thought he was serious, I would absolutely, like, come off the top rope and dunk. <laughs> <laughs> but I am serious as shit about that Mitchell Mountain stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and just like he was about Tommy being an All-American. Hey, nah. I'm just saying. Shit that hits. Dustin, thanks for the five. Zach, you going to have Scam Web and the other Michigan fans running with how Ryan Day hired your dad to set up and take down Harbaugh now. That's the point. If everybody in here tweets that, that it was Zach Smith's dad that, I'm, that I'm, did this. I'm going to tweet it right now. As I'm you just saying, these up. if the whole army goes and retweets that, like, we could have a thousand retweets in a minute on that. I'm going I'm to retweet it right now. That's you know, really a goer. That's really a goer, bro. Yeah. Because we know who did it. Who done it? Who done it? Um, Where are we at? Oh. Jabu, thanks for the two. Bro went full Hillary Clinton on that laptop. Jesus, you guys, you guys love your politics. Ooh-y. Buckeye Brazy, thanks for the 20. Zach Chris, I put a lot of McCourt struggles on day. Instead of keeping Stroud in and blowout games last year, Kyle should have been getting more reps and experience. Hey, so this is a great point. That that is that is a good point. But at <laughs> I, that point, I don't think <laughs> who the quarterback was going to be this year. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't disagree. Yeah. I do not disagree. Keel, thanks for the five. Uh, Tice talks real heavy in the chat, but won't dig out of his piggy bank to scrape up some super chat money. Damn. Hey, we appreciate him watching. I'm not here for for fin- finance shaming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love all shaming. You really do. <laughs> Jacob, thanks for the five. Better make sure Chris doesn't have a menace manifesto and is planning to take over your show. All jokes aside, love the show. Go Bucks. I mean, I, I'd read it. Chris has great ideas. I do have great ideas. I learned something. But I, one of the things that I've always been, I've never wanted to be the star. So it's always it's always been Zach's world. I'm like Connor Stallion who needed to be the star. Man, what? He was crying and jerking off to being the star. So we're going to do it. Time. Bro, he put on a message board. like, oh, Just call me coach. Call me coach. Bro, he put on a message board nine years ago that it was his dream and ultimate goal to be the head coach in Michigan. Yeah. Wild times. Christian, thanks for the two. R.I.P. Dolph. Young Dolph. Great rapper. Boss, thanks for the two. Coco, thanks for the two. Bet. (laughs) Tate, thank you for the five. My guy, Tate. Happy belated birthday. Thoughts on Davidson Iggy has done for you all this year. So, Tate is an Ole Miss fan. Um, He's been been really good. Mm -hmm. Um, He's he's a little bit of a liability at times. He's very aggressive. But you could tell he's a really good player. Yeah. He's he's been doing – 
re- playing really well. Really, really good player. Also, Zach, we'll talk about it next week, but big old Miss news. Guess who is coming back? Jackson Dart. Modern day Tim Tebow, baby. Bring him back. He He's, should, right? With his yeah. draft class. Mm-hmm. And, and it immediately becomes a guy who's going to be Bo Nix level trajectory in terms of being in the first round, in yeah. my opinion. Jordan, thanks for the 10. You got any stories on Chris Partridge? I'm from New Jersey, so I know him uh, as a legendary high school football coach at Paramus Catholic. Got Jabril and Gary. He was big on the satellite camps, too. What were your opinions on those? Uh, the satellite camps were fucking awful. Um, they, they were cool to be able to go down and see kids, but they were awful. I mean, all mm-hmm. summer you're flying to all these stupid-ass satellite camps with a bunch of other coaches. You can't really recruit because there's so many coaches there. They were awful. And I thought Chris Partridge was a huge, flaming fucking douchebag. I did when he was at Paramus. Then he he peddled his kids to get a job at Michigan, which I think is ridiculous. You want to you make a jump from high school football to college? Do it like Pat Sertain did. His kid was a big-time recruit. We entertained hiring him. Alabama entertained hiring him. And he called everybody that was trying to hire him because he's a great coach. And he said, listen, I'm not doing this this year. I'm going to let I'm gonna let Pat, my son, decide where he's going to go to school. And then down the road sometime, if someone wants to hire me, we'll entertain that conversation then. That's how a grown-ass man handles it. It's not like, hey, I have Rashawn Gary and Jabril Peppers. Uh, what do you think? You got a spot on staff? Like, absolute fucking flaming douchebag. Yeah. And didn't, didn't he leave for a little bit then come back to Michigan? Uh, I don't know that. Oh, I thought he left and came back. So I don't know. But honestly, fuck, bro. Rose, <laughs> thanks for the five. Uh, fuck Patetti for ruining the best version of the game we may never get. Fuck Team Up North for declining a two-game suspension and ruining the game. Rage. Bucks by 90. Ooh, by 90. That's that's impressive. Yeah, honestly, bro, Michigan should have just taken the two-game suspension initially, like weeks and weeks and weeks ago, and he would have been back for Penn State, I believe. Yeah, uh, it's just they're – they're just absolutely ignorant and naive. I don't know what else to say. Facts. Danny, thanks for the two. Michigan's <laughs> softer than libs at a Biden rally. This is the most we've ever gotten into politics. Really getting into politics today. Stu, thanks for the five. Happy Friday, Menace Army. Happy Friday to you, Stu. Coach, what did you think of that targeting hit in the pit Boston College game? Yeah, kid, kid's got to be ejected, and he shouldn't probably shouldn't play next week either. Like, that's what targeting was made for. Yeah. That hit. He literally now, didn't even attempt to wrap up. He, dude, he went backwards and like launched himself like a torpedo at the kid's helmet. Yeah, like just like a- there's no place in football for that. That is what they were trying to get rid of. Now it's other soft shit that they're calling targeting. That is what should be heavily penalized. He looked like a seal. Um, he left in 2019 to be the DC at Ole Miss and then came back in February 2023. Mm-hmm. So thank you, uh, Nick, for that. I thought I remembered that. Mark Teixeira, I'm a huge fan. Thank you for just playing. Mario, appreciate the 10. You know what they say? If it looks like a skunk, smells like a skunk, it's a Wolverine. <laughs> also, you guys think Michigan changes their mascot to cheetahs? <laughs> Great content. Keep up the work, boys. I'd be here for it. I would, too. They're, I mean, they're already standing behind it and owning it. Might as well. Like Connor Stein's NIL deal with Chester? <laughs> Who says no? Muscle Boss, thanks for the five. How do you feel about the team up north coach crying? Oh, I addressed it, but we have, we respect Sharon more, so I'm not going to address it again. I love a black man. Damn, I'm going to clip that. <laughs> pause. Is it too late to say pause? No, you can't. There's no pause around here, just vibes, and now we know your vibes. <laughs> I, lo- I love seeing a black man win. No, <laughs> that's not what you said, bro. Oh, Lord. Oh, what a Friday. I love it here. I fucking love it here. It's only 900 degrees in the studio, but I love it here. That's not even like in the top 10 pausiest shit I've said, right? Ah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Damn. I love seeing a black man win. So That's I- different. A yeah, different yeah. statement. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, I got to I gotta go to Joe and not Pasco for that one. Yeah. It's fucking hell. We do love black men, though, like collectively. I'm not, I'm not even addressing this. Daniel, thanks for the two. Oh, they're saying it. Uncle T was uh, Mel Tucker. <laughs> That's the one, bro. That's oh, the one, no. bro. That's the one, bro. Fucking Mel Tucker. Got his revenge. Got it. Tucker and Tracy. We got him. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, thanks for the two. Harbaugh can coach through the week. No excuses. OH. That's a fact. Um, should Harbaugh be allowed to coach? Is <laughs> Harbaugh will have to miss the... Uh, Big Ten title game if they go, right? Like, no. does, does the Big Ten control that or no? I, well, they they made it so that he can coach the postseason, including the, the championship game if they make it. Okay, I guess I just didn't know. I'm telling was- you, bro, they're, it's, they're, they're cooking a plan. Michigan ain't beating Ohio State, and I'm not saying Ohio State's going to win it. The refs are going to make sure. 
Hey, put all your money on a Bucks money line. I'm just saying. Fucking Mentz is in here. He's like, yeah, do it. I promise. <laughs> it's the play. <laughs> Mentz is over there shaking his head. I fucking love Mentz, bro. That's lit. David, thanks for the 10. I've been sold on this show since Chris sold the sizzle on Georgia Tech and Zach sold the steak on the cheaters up north. Costco doesn't have enough popcorn to y'all's last show. Cheers, gents. We appreciate it, man. It's been real. T. Barry, thanks for the 10. Ohio State's offense is looking anemic and it's been getting Worst the last three years. Should Hartline call plays in the game? Christ. If they lose the team up north, should we start chanting for Urban and sign him on air? Fox. Uh, no. No to all that. No I, to all that. Not honestly, but like the offense, I thought last year was pretty good. And the year before, yeah. they were pretty good. Yeah, the year before, they were a little soft. But yeah, last year, they were pretty good. Yeah. And in the second half, they, they, they didn't help the defense at all. They struggled a ton. Mm -hmm. they Gave did. the ball back to Michigan. But, the, you know, the defense was Swiss cheese last year. Josh, thanks for the – oh, Josh Barton, my guy. Thanks for the five. Buckeye Artist here. Please shout out my daughter, Lyric. She made pre-med school at 12 years old. So proud. Also working on a painting for you. Hell yeah. Whoa, pre-med school That's at 12. That's awesome, man. Shout out to Lyric. That's big time. That is massive. Cave, thanks for the two. Yoder just trolled Urban on Twitter. That was yeah, great. That's that fucking was, uh, awesome. Andy, thanks for the two. Zach, most pissed off you've ever seen Urban. Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> Might have been when he found out the receivers hadn't start catching jugs once we first got hired. It was like one weekend, and I didn't have him on a jugs routine yet, and he went fucking nuclear, punching walls, <laughs> fired Tom Herman and I, like, really bad. Fired both. He's been really mad a lot, though. <laughs> Corey, thanks for the five. Wonder, I wonder if Portnoy really believes what he says or he's saying it for clicks. He's saying it for clicks. He can't be that dumb. He's a great businessman. I mean, he's too smart and too good at what he does. And he's being too dramatic about it, right? Like, if, if he really... Emergency press conference! And he's just screaming the whole time. He's truly R.J. Young right now. The white R.J. The white R.J. Young. Dave Portnoy. Mm -hmm. Joe, thanks for the two. Starting a GoFundMe for Tice. He's poor as fuck. <laughs> Damn. Mom, but thanks for the two. As a Michigan fan, I just want this to be over. Right. That, if I would do. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want it to end, though. Keel, thanks for the two. Damn, Zach, you made me feel bad. Sorry, Tice. <laughs> Jay, thank you for the two more. Here's that two you asked to borrow, Tice. Yeah, they're going after the money. <laughs> Logan, thanks for the two. Is McCord why Jeremiah Smith flips to Florida State? I don't believe that is the reason. No. Because, I mean, who's Florida State's quarterback going to be next year? I don't know. Me. Brody, thanks for the five. OH, birthday was yesterday and just love the show. Wanted to hear your thoughts on the BG versus Toledo game. I was there and it was a classic match. Man, it broke my heart. Just to sustain the drive and win it. Or just Daquan, I mean, the way they scored, Daquan Finn on that little check down that took it to the house. Yeah. Oh. Shout out to Quan Finn, big fan. But uh, it's still Isaac Zumba always on here, though. But happy birthday, Brody. Yeah, happy birthday. Yeah, you're real. Last one. Eric, thanks for the five. Day adding the two back sets, heavy personnel, counters for the fake counter reverse. Day has been studying the 49ers to best use this personnel this year. Has he? I mean, he's de he definitely is and does. I, I really like what they're doing offensively. The run game's so multiple. Yeah. Zach, bro, hell of a fucking show. Over 11,000 people watch live. You Fuck guys, around and find out, Menace Army. We appreciate you. Enjoy your weekend, because next week's going to be a movie. Mm -hmm. It's Rivalry Week. The next time we tune in, Monday at noon, we'll see you then. Menace out.